Do deaf children scream? I don't know. We're about to find out. <laughs> I mean, they're not mute, so. <laughs> can, can you see them, like, signing aggressively for help? <laughs> like... I think what we're going to do is we're going to go on to the Mr. Beast dog pack stuff. With this, there is a couple additional videos from this sad sack of shit. And that uh, I'm going to point out a bunch of stuff. I'm going to point out a bunch of stuff the way I noticed it. Um, Jim knows exactly what I'm going to say already. I've not watched this video. I've heard there's a lot of shameless plugging in this. We might watch it. I don't really know what the fuck this guy's going to offer. That's going to be like, blow me the fuck away. I doubt it'll be anything. But... And then I've got another video that is probably going to be the one we'll watch from Optimus, who has been battling online with Jake the Viking, and it'll it'll probably explain the better it better and not be as grifty as the comedians video. I'm just saying that I know it's out there. I'm acknowledging it. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I I think what we'll do is we'll start off we'll start off with the dog pack video. So to explain the whole Mr. B stuff, so I've covered. Uh, Prism 42 stuff and Brion's video that goes into the Chris Tyson stuff. From that, Dog Pack 404, who is Dawson, who is a former employee of Mr. Beast, allegedly, came out with two videos now. He's come out with this video roughly a week ago and then a new video just a couple days ago. In both of these videos, he is explaining just different issues with... Uh, Mr. Beast, and I think he does a fantastic job in this video of pointing out stuff. Now, whether you want to run with that or not, whether you want to believe like online lawyers like Legal Mindset or Legal Eagle, who have been offering good legal advice and legal opinions on this, is up to you. Um, some people think that he's scot free because of everything he's used is public information and then i've heard other arguments where he could still be in trouble because even though it's public information it's the way he's assembling that information um there is a lot of controversy that has been generated by dog pack 404's videos regardless of how yeah. you look at it do you think attention is the most valuable currency in the world well of course if you could post something and everyone in the world would watch it you'd be the most powerful man on earth not promoting gambling. I think people are going to see this name. Well, the guy smart who with just money. throws away millions of dollars on YouTube videos is a gambler. Who would have thought? Not to the point where he's gambling with people's lives. You don't have to pay anything to enter the gym. How is this legal? I don't get it. It's a scam. Are you just forged for fake signatures? Honey well, schemes are great up until they just go bust. Hi, I wanted to provide some context to this video. I'm a former Mr. Beast employee, and today I am alleging that the company uh, rigged videos and uh, did illegal lotteries and sold fake signatures. I, I would consider that fraud, okay? Thank you, enjoy the video. So this is part one into my investigation into Mr. Beast. Uh, I recorded this before the Chris stuff came out. I was also gonna come out about the Chris stuff, probably in part two or three. Um, Cause I see a lot of people saying like, oh, if you knew, why didn't you come forward? Why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, I was gonna come forward and also like, Going to the authorities isn't going to work because what are you going to say like you heard rumors that this person was this way or that you know there's obviously evidence of like the shad based stuff like that's been out for a while people have internally known at the company that like chris is kind of a, a potential miners attracted person and, and the company protects her and or they were protecting her and they protected her as long as they could jimmy knew everyone knew so you know which i think that's more of a red flag than anything i'm going to reveal in this video but Bro, I worked there not even five days. Chris was talking about his love for lolly porn and talking about or yeah, and talking about his Discord server where they shared where they shared it. Uh glad you spoke up. That place is I'm guessing hell. Uh I confirm this person is an employee. Um you know, there's messages happening like Mr. Beast Discords and Yeah, I don't know. It's a mess when like Mr. Beast contestants are being exposed to like minor attracted persons and the company's protecting them. You know, there's a big emphasis at the company of like how to manipulate children, like understanding their psychology and everything and like seeing that that's sort of used in weird ways. And you know, there's been like parasocial relationships and 
you know, encouraging, like almost children simping for these people. And, you know, maybe that's as nefarious as it gets, or maybe it goes deeper. Anyway, here's an old podcast clip of Jimmy explaining that he knows that his audience is young. Oh, which is an old clip. You could say like his audience grew up. I would say he's gained most of his audience since then and his content's only gotten younger. Uh, also, this clip really just shows that like, he understands that YouTube analytics are bullshit because he can try to use that as a defense, but he knows. Uh, so here's that clip and then I'll get into the video. The average demographic is what, 13 through 17? Is that the biggest spike in your analytics? Well, I mean, mine's horseshit. It says like 18 to 24, but I know all my fucking viewers are little kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I feel like it's a lot like that because, you know, little kids lie about their age or they're on their, you know, like... But well, yeah, and then I have, but, like, a fucking massive one for, like, the 40-year-old range because all the fucking idiots are on their parents' account. Now, Mr. Beast intentionally manipulates these children's vulnerable minds for profit using uh, three simple steps which closely align with the three major types of behavioral learning. Step one is getting the viewer to associate the brand with trust and authority. Mr. Beast videos are real and he's a great guy that gives away big rewards to his loyal followers. I will show you irrefutable evidence in a minute that his videos are in fact fake. Step two is showing the viewers that when people interact with Mr. Beast in a way that benefits Mr. Beast when they do what he tells them to do, they win big rewards. Is he subscribed? You are subscribed. Here's some money. Have a good day. Some of them feel like I just walk around with a thousand dollars. It's like, oh, thanks for watching my videos. Hit that subscribe button because you might bump into me in real life and it might make you a lot of money. When people are devout followers of Mr. Beast, they get rewarded. And step three is finally calling on the viewer to act in some way that benefits the brand. Promising big rewards you know, in return. I kind of want to bring up some here. Yeah. The way how he did that, just like out in the middle of the street. Yeah. What do you think he had set up for like security? And how far do you think it spread out? Like just from the initial group or maybe a block from where they were filming because they're walking in a certain direction? <sighs> I don't even think he had probably that much. Because I'm thinking of it like this. Handing, it, like, carrying around $1,000 on you all the time and admitting that is kind of a dangerous thing. Yeah. Because of muggers and everything. Like, you could be walking the street and they know you have at least a grand on you. Yeah, but how often is he going to be just walking the street? Yeah, I know. But that's the thing. He's doing it for random fans. Yeah. So, if there's a chance that they see him doing it and they see him videotaping it. You've literally created a target or a crosshair on that kid for a mugger. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't think they gave a shit. Even at all if about he's that with kid. his parents, <laughs> even if he's, even if they have like adults with them, a mugger could easily knife them or just threaten them for the money and they will hand it over. So it's like you're creating a fucking situation that's that could end badly oh yeah you're you're absolutely putting people at risk in that way yeah yeah i i, I, I have a, go ahead oh go ahead oh well i have a different perspective on it you know how they were saying that he faked shit i can easily see him faking this yeah with like monopoly he, money like he or he, that he gets like oh hey you know oh your nephew's in town we'll put him in a video oh your little brother okay we'll put him in a video and they just stage these like employees and friends of employees down the street he walked down he, ha 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 hands yeah, out but... their money and he has a bodyguard off camera and then all right it's a wrap they all get they all walk together in their vehicle and head off yeah i just i think the whole fucking thing is fake i'm just gonna leave it at that i feel like i just walk around with a thousand dollars it's like oh thanks for watching my videos hit that subscribe button because you might bump into me in real life and it might make you a lot of money when people are devout followers of mr beast they get rewarded. And step three is finally calling on the viewer to act in some way that benefits the brand. Promising big rewards in return. Now it's your turn to do what Mr. Beast tells you and you will win big rewards. But you actually won't unless you're famous or friends or family of a Mr. Beast employee. So young impressionable viewers are made to believe that Mr. Beast is a trusted authority who can give them big rewards. These young viewers are explicitly shown that dedicated followers. I will show you irrefutable evidence in a minute that his videos are in fact fake. Step two is showing the viewers that when people interact with Mr. Beast in a way that's saying big rewards in return, now it's your turn to do what Mr. Beast tells you and you will win big rewards. But you actually won't unless you're famous or friends or family of a Mr. Beast employee. So young impressionable viewers are made to believe that Mr. Beast is a trusted authority who can give them big rewards.
Oh. These young viewers are explicitly shown that dedicated followers or random subscribers like themselves are winning big rewards when they do what Mr. Beast tells them. These young viewers are explicitly told repeatedly that if they subscribe, if they buy products or act in some way that benefits the brand, they will win big rewards. Trust Mr. Beast, watch him help others, contribute to his cause, and one day he'll help you too. That's the formula. Subscribe for a Lamborghini and you to make me happy. You could be in one of these Subscribe right now. And you might get paid for this next video. You might get a chance to win a free Subscribe and subscribe to the next video. Subscribe and you might win a free car. Subscribe for a free car. I love all of you. Subscribe and you could come next time. I give you $100. Subscribe again. Subscribe and you could win a free car. Subscribe and you could also win a Seriously, we always fly subscribers down. They never fly random subscribers down. Mr. Beast fakes his videos in ways that are worse than you realize. Uh, I say that because he's been exposed for faking videos before and the common response is, why does it matter if the videos are fake? They're just meant to be entertainment. A large part of Mr. Beast's brand is the fact that he doesn't fake videos. I remember when I first started seeing your videos, I was like, this shit's gotta be fake. Oh yeah, like, it's a huge so, problem for us now. I actually have to dial back my content sometimes just so people think it's real. Also, if, if what we had to film was scripted, you know, because what we do is not scripted, so you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control, blah, blah. If what we did was scripted, holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, this shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, sure, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, these buildings are CGI, but it's not your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker. It's just a guy. This whole room is fake. This contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Beast. They haven't got through this fake door twice. This line is scripted. This action is scripted. Uh, in fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. You did it! Yeah! What we did was scripted. Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Let's talk about Mac for a second. We will die. Do you understand that? <laughs> I found public records showing that Mac moved from California to Greenville, North Carolina, where Jimmy is located, back in August 2023, two months before he appeared as a contestant. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, this is around the time when Mac started working full-time on the editing team at Mr. Beast. Also, he didn't just move into any old house, he moved into a million dollar mansion. Now, I'm not gonna dox him, only some asshole would do something like that. After doxing and bullying the pilot some more, like a f***ing douchebag, turns to Eric and says, how do I fly this thing? <laughs> and Eric just starts pushing buttons. But I did find pictures of this mansion online, so I fed them into ChatGPT and asked it to create similar images. And this is what it came up with. And it's honestly not that far off. His 6,000 square foot million dollar mansion comes with a movie theater and seven bathrooms. What are you gonna spend the $800,000 on? I mean, my life's changed now. Yeah, I'm sure that $800,000 is really gonna change your life. Max is a nice car. Tell me, where are we right now? Uh, we're in the place that uh, we drove to a few months ago. Uh, Mac, let's let's cut the shit here. What have you been doing for like the last year? A lot of family stuff. What kind of family stuff? Just like uh, you know, playing catch with my dad. You know, for a year. What do you? How do you make money? <laughs> how are you uh, like surviving? Basically, like my main strategy is I, I go to like a like grocery store type places. Grocery store type places. <laughs> and I basically, I'll do it when I get there. I usually get like like a an amount of food that would take like a week or so. Right? With with what money? The money that I made. How did you make it? Huh? Where? Yeah, well, listen, you're getting too caught up in the details. They'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. We will die. Do you understand that? <laughs> During this time lapse on the fourth day of seven days stranded at sea, you can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But after a hard cut, magically five people are awake, and two of the boys have bright yellow raincoats that they didn't have when it rained on day two. And after standing the whole night completely soaked, you didn't spend the night soaked, Jimmy. You slept on the production yacht. It's ironic because this is one of the videos where they claim that they don't fake things. But no, we have to be the real channel that doesn't fake things. In this video, this wink was added in post. In fact, 58 was actually on the far opposite side of the room from 42, and he just didn't hear him. This whole revenge storyline was added in post. Multiple shots show how timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. They also manipulated contestants' audio in post. So I wanted to see, like, what do you guys think of, like, all of this, the faking the videos portion of it? Like, does it really impact you guys that much? I mean, if it was a competition and it was an open invitation to anybody, yeah, it probably would affect me more. But if it's just to the employees or the staff or like family members, yeah, I mean, they could do fuck all they want. Okay. I, I think it depends on the video. 
Okay. Yeah, it's like if, it, if there was like faking videos of like, you know, Mala Max level with the vampire pedophile shit. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be fucking upset about that. <laughs> like, I mean, you're slandering an innocent dude here. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm more I I'm more upset at the first video than these because like that's like giving somebody hope that oh, if I'm out on the streets of North Carolina, I can just get money. That would be really cool. As opposed to where like these competitions I can see them more as like sort of dramatized, sort of more like entertainment, like the raft. Like, yeah, I, I mean, the handing out money, I would agree because that's like fucking with kids' heads. Yeah, like the challenges, like you know, stuff like did Mr. Beast not eat for thirty days? Uh, that I really could care less if that's fake. It's more like when you sort of tease the audience participation and then sort of yank that away subtly because it's fake. That's what gets to me, not the challenge videos. See, I think the bigger thing here is that he's trying to bring a point to is when do you know when it's real then? Because, like, we just spent, like, 25, 30 minutes talking about whether that one video is fake because he brought this stuff to her up to us. Like, I, I think that's kind of maybe what he was going for is, like, you can't trust anything because you have no idea to know when it's fake versus when it's real. Well, no, I think it's just like my read on it is not just that, but it also plays into his broader argument of like the lottery, uh, like the fake lottery shit. Yeah. Yeah. Or is that it's become so ingrained with the content. He thinks he could just do it when it comes to any other situation and that'll land him in the legal hot water to a certain degree. Like when it came to the lottery, it's like, he comes up with these fake uh, time schedules for when you have to enter now, otherwise you will miss out, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. And then it's like, he's so focused on faking shit that he doesn't remember that. He said before it was like five minutes and he says the same thing, but now it's like 30 seconds. Yeah. Hurry, 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 you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, like I said, the part that bothers me, like with the fake stuff is the ones that tease subscriber and audience participation okay. because you're affecting people you know what i mean i don't care if you fake like a, a challenge or whatever but when you when you take the person at home like the eight-year-old that like really wanted a mr b signature yeah and you don't he doesn't get it or like oh i could be in a mr beast video and he's not related to anyone, so there's no way in hell. But he yeah. still has that hope. When you start affecting people and giving them hope, that's where it crosses the line for me. Okay. I was just kind of curious to gauge your temperature on this. So, like, I had my own personal thoughts here, but I didn't know. We got 15 minutes. In general, if anything happens last second, it's fake. Or if you can hear someone's voice but can't see their mouth, the audio could easily be added in post. I literally think I'm gonna kill you. And yes, this lie detector video was also fake. Have you ever faked a video? No. Fake that lie. Uh, it's still real to me, damn it! Okay, so Mr. Beast fabricates some contestant dialogue and timers and movements and storylines and uses a bunch of shitty CGI, but who really cares? I mean, the videos are just for entertainment only, right? I mean, it's not like he's ever rigged the results of a challenge. That would be impossible because he films with hundreds of random subscribers, right? Wrong. Let's look at this video. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants are not random subscribers. So many people had jobs. Oh, that contestant had to get out for her job? I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I actually recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local yeah, to I kinda cities, wanna... and oftentimes... <laughs> I kind of want to point out Slug calling Dogpack a doxer. Because yeah. of the fucking Mr. B's girlfriend. <laughs> that was incredibly fucking retarded and petty. Because, I mean, especially after your little discussion with fucking Milk Dud and limited public figure status. <laughs> like, she fits the definition, bro. Yeah, I would say that. Like, Yeah, but I think a lot of people are just, especially Slug, are looking at this from the YouTube brain perspective. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that, and I think that's. I think I think that's the biggest fucking hindrance that this guy is dealing with, and it's kind of the other reason why I don't think Slug should open his mouth on this. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's a lot of people that are looking at this YouTube brain because I'll be honest, and it's funny because they're looking at it YouTube brain for them. 
They're mm-hmm. not looking at an even YouTube brain for a YouTube for channel. <laughs> yeah, like, seriously, it's projection. It's like projection yes. at this point. Yes, because like, when we get to this other video, what is the biggest complaint with this video that you've heard? Oh, the whole beginning of this is shit. And then he <laughs> saves everything great for the end. Right? I remember you popped off about it to d- me in DMs. Like, no, of course everybody's going to want to put the good stuff at the end. Well, Viewer retention. Viewer retention is a thing there, everybody yeah. is after on fucking YouTube. Why would you put everything great in the first five minutes? Who's going to watch the rest of this 45 minutes worth of shit? Yeah. You uh, again, teased it's it. Like... He teases it. He shows all the crying bullshit and then shows exactly what he said in the beginning at the end when he said, I will show it at the end. So if you want to be lazy, Yes, click to the beginning end. But like, Jesus. Well, you, know what, you know what the funny thing too is the people that are saying that are the same people that use that technique in their videos. Yes. Videos. Mm. Yes. They are the exact mm. same people. It's like, <laughs> how dare you blue ball us? Meanwhile, I'll blue ball my own audience. Friends and family of Mr. Beast employees or just the employees themselves. And when they do pull someone from outside of North Carolina, it's usually somebody who's in the industry, who's camera trained, who has built a following. Hey, anyone I'm friends with watching that wants 10 grand? They are never random subscribers. If you subscribe, you will not win a million dollars. And what's even worse is that the results of this video were completely scripted. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, it would have been a PR problem if the boys had won by a lot. And because so many of the female contestants were Mr. Beast employees who got out immediately. Yeah, I, I wonder you? why the I wonder why it would be a PR problem. It's not like this is the industry standard. It's like, oh, boys are better than girls. Can't have that. Do you want to know what job I know this guy didn't do? HR. Editing. (laughs) 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 Because why the fuck would you sit there and show this message on screen and he has a, a screen over of the exact same fucking message right here. Why? (laughs) And you put it in an illegible fucking font. I also like how (laughs) his captioning says best employees. Yes. And you know what the other thing I've noticed too? If you really want to go back and be nitpicky, when he's in the beginning here and he's talking in the fucking jungle with the monkeys, his fucking captioning's overlapping itself. Can we, can we didn't, talk about was... how it's unacceptable that the good part is at the end? <laughs> <laughs> but like, I'm just pointing out the fact that he's not experienced. Like, I'm just noticing this shit and I wouldn't even call myself experienced. This is just shit that would bother me. As a complete fucking novice sack of shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> why would you put something on the screen and then literally write it out? Would have been a quote PR unquote. problem if the boys had <laughs> won by a lot. <laughs> this is literally the text version of that. <laughs> it is. Oh, God. Because so many of the female contestants were Mr. Beast employees who got out immediately. Production stepped in to actually make the results of the challenge closer. Uh, You can actually see some of this happen on camera, like when Jimmy pays one of the boys $10,000 to leave, which is twice as much as the actual prize money, uh, but doesn't make the same offer to the girls. The boys were blowing you out of the water. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. Now if you don't win, that was all for nothing. At another point, he gives the girls a camera drone so they would have been able to see how many boys were left. It doesn't work out, but seeing how much they're willing to help I don't understand, okay, like, in all of this, that was one thing that, like, I didn't understand what the impact of doing that was going to be. Like, can you guys make that make sense? Like, what's the visibility of them being able to see how many boys are left in the circle as a strategic advantage going to be? I don't know. It just seems like pointless busy work and drama. Yeah, yeah, it's like, we need filler. (laughs) We need B-roll. B-roll, damn it. (laughs) We need to have scheming for plot that leads On nowhere. Camera, I'm willing to believe that they did, in fact, help them off camera. You know, apparently at the end, they were only monitoring the boys to see if they stepped on the red line and not the girls so that the girls would win the challenge. And to be clear, obviously the girls had an unfair start with having so many Mr. Beast employees get out immediately. You know, I think they all did deserve $5,000 for that, but also the boys should deserve a fair chance at winning, I think. I think that's the expectation when you run a game show. But hey, that was a while ago, so I'm just glad they're not doing another rigged boys versus girls video. Yeah, there it is again. So no. 
Yeah. The editing mistake. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll point out shit that you'll notice all over and it's like glaringly obvious. And, and you'll never look at this guy as like competent, but it's like, it's not to m- discredit his message. Well, like, I mean, that just shows like he isn't. Well, I mean, that doesn't show that he's like highly polished and then it could be seen more as a work from that angle. It just seems like it's coming from someone who is trying to get it out there and is trying to think the best way how to highlight it, but fucks up. Yeah. It, it, it makes it seem more genuine in the attempt. Yes. So I, I just don't see how people can like, I mean, I'm not going to hinge it all on that one aspect, but that's just like one aspect on top of others that I've pointed out or that you've pointed out that makes it seem like this dude is the genuine article. Yep. He ain't fucking scheming. He ain't trying to pull the wool over your eyes. I don't think he's he being is. Legit. I think he legitimately is trying to do a good thing here. And this is something that probably deeply bothered him for a while that didn't stand out to anybody. And he's like, I've had enough. I'll fucking do it. And I'll do it in a way that like takes all of his own fucking words and uses it against him because it's not just me spurging out in front of a fucking screen saying a bunch of things like i can literally show you him doing the things that he's doing like yeah and like is it is it to not be expected that someone as small as he was previously to not be like fucking erratic and nervous given all the attention this like, is video that's gotta one be a, on a brand new know, channel less than a month ago i just i can't wait to point the other shit out to you sure it's gonna be funny when influence how a challenge progresses I want to show one more example. This is a real-time video, meaning that time elapses the same in the video as it does in real life. Now, immediately, the intro is sped up, and the timer is clearly added in post, and he clearly touches the laser here, but whatever. Let's assume that it's all real-time. When he reaches the bottom floor, he has to turn these water valves. Now, you can tell that these valves aren't actually connected to anything because the water flows out in an instant, and it happens when he's not even touching the valve. The contestant also goes back to the first valve unaware that anything had happened, and he's still able to spin it. So the valve seems to spin freely and isn't actually connected to the flow of water. So you could assume that producers might be off camera with remote switches to trigger the flow of water. And assuming they've tested this, the producers might know how long it takes for the water to clear out of the room, so they could sort of decide on the fly how many turns of the valve it takes, or just when to trigger the water in general to make the results close. And in this video, spoiler alert, the contestant wins the money, so rigging the challenge could be seen as a good thing. But there are many examples of contestants losing. And in traditional media, this kind of rigging is actually completely illegal. We always have the same person tie all the knots so that we know they've tied them at the exact same tension. I mean, we get down to inches and then we have a standards and practices person. And if you don't know what that is, you know, on any kind of a game. Uh, to bring up like something from television past, especially since he brought up the guy from Survivor, you remember the, uh, the challenge where it was men versus women? Yeah. In comparison to what like Mr. Beast did where he just paid certain men to leave and then like tried to give the girls an unfair advantage with a fucking drone. Yep. Regardless if it made sense. Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> during that challenge, the women the women were doing so poorly that they had to do like a bit of a prisoner swap where they had one guy go over to the women's team and have one woman go over to the guy's team in order to quote unquote balance it out because the guys were just <laughs> knocking it out of the park. <laughs> oh my god and i think that almost got them into hot water until they had to like ex- I, because if i remember correctly they did like a uh what was it, a 10 minute explainer for the situation in order for it to not be considered like cheating or rigging yeah but oh, like that right there was also like another example that serves like the whole uh what is it the the biological dimorphism of the human species. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody is equal here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Believe in equality here at the Strictly Patrick Channel. Less if it's less if it's Hitler. <laughs> yeah, we we think differently about Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> I should have asked if you were in Hitler hour. <laughs> I mean, it could be if we needed to be. 
this, at this point, I already pulled the trigger on the joke, so it has to be. Like... <laughs> While you guys are talking about that, I'm obsessing over trying to kill a fly, so... <laughs> I mean, you're I'm like, basically trying to not you're Auschwitzing the fly. I'm about to evilize this fucking fly all over my desk. <laughs> <laughs> See, it all comes back to Hitler anyway. <laughs> How? I don't know, but it just works. Yeah. Game show where there is a prize. You have to have somebody that ensures that it's fair. They are out there essentially to make sure that we don't do something that would favor one player or one tribe. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. In my mind, well, I mean, I'm you kind of did. That's why you had to make that explainer for the men versus women <laughs> challenge. <laughs> <laughs> you had to make it fair by like you know the the slimmest of fucking margins fair <laughs> game mm -hmm. but it's not if they were having problems finding people they can see kind of what area you're in uh, mm. and they came to my area many times and i was in the smallest cupboard <laughs> They had like big ones, medium ones, and small there it ones. Is again. I contorted this little four foot ten body into the smallest space, and I was in there for hours. <laughs> and they didn't. I hate her so much. <laughs> I didn't even open the I... door. <laughs> it's, it's. I, I mean, this goes back to the StarCraft shit, like for, like from Destiny. But her boyfriend, Husky Starcraft, with a star uh, was like a shoutcaster. Okay. He quit to manage her career so she could go bake cookies. <laughs> yeah. I lost one of my favorite shoutcasters <laughs> so this bitch could make gingerbread. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. When when it's like, oh, Mister B scammed me. Good, you scammed me, you bitch. Yeah. I was gonna yeah, say this hey. sounds like a real deep cut. <laughs> it is. It is. I lost a lot that year. But you got ginger cookies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We wouldn't know about ovens, would we? <laughs> oh God. Well, oh God. Oh, could... well, I mean, we wouldn't know about ovens if it weren't for Hitler. Right? It's like, oh no, it's the Nick Fuentes joke now. Because <laughs> they were like, a person can't even fit in there. So they went in oh there and they God. opened all the cabinets and my heart was like, oh, they're going to find me. They're going to find me. And then I could hear them saying like, she's not here. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, she's not here. <laughs> the other thing that they said is absolutely no climbing in the air vents or the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And they said it's because they do all their wiring in mm -hmm. the ceiling. So I'm up here. If it was held accountable, especially because this was a YouTube original production, mm. Zach would have been eliminated for cheating. He broke the rules and I guarantee you, if I claimed, if I climbed in the ceiling, Mr. Beast would eliminate me. He was in the ceiling! Also, I think some of the Mr. Beast be giveaways are fake. Uh, yeah, okay, now, she's the same chick who came out like a couple of years ago with that accusation, right? Yes. Okay, a I, couple years I, ago? I know, yeah. Remember the one person who was going at Mr. Beast for, like, the unfair competition, how she was, like, you know, uh, what is it? Yeah, it was around a I couple of the... years ago, yeah, because we're in 2022, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, what? it's the same shit. <laughs> I thought yeah, that was every... like a couple of months ago, what the fuck do you mean? It was two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It was like, this is the same chick from like two years back because that came out right around the same time as the, or was it like a year before? And then like after you had the Chris Tyson is Mr. Beast's worst nightmare video. Um, Cause that was like a year ago for that one. Yeah. And then before her, that she made her claims against Mr. Beast. Then yep. when that video came out, she popped up again. I think a lot of people just hate her for her, for her, her performance from those times but what she says actually lines up and like i mean the dude's using it because he knows uh, you could you could you could hate her for being the person that she is i'm just I saying do, don't like, worry she was right all along oh i still hate her though <laughs> <laughs> again this is this is why i don't like agree with a lot of people because they have conflicted interests
yeah, when it comes to like certain people in this. Yeah, and I get it. I get like some people are like over her story because of like what Josh pointed out with the the sexism and the misogyny point of it and all that. And it's like that's where she lost a lot of people. And it's like, yeah. and that's why nobody cared to look into it because in the minute you took that story and like, okay, here to give you an idea, if Dawson had led with sad comedian talks about pedo daddy, you wouldn't be hanging around for video two. Don't you mean video? Th- well, yeah, video two, but I mean, some people are even like doing that for video three. Yeah. Like I just... I'm really looking forward to it, but hopefully, maybe I'll change some perspectives. I don't even give a shit if it's like five people's perspectives. Like, I don't care if it's just my perspective and everything remains the same. Like, I I, I really think that this, that Dawson is well-intentioned. That's not to say that there's not people coming in here and fleecing him and clout sucking a little off of the credibility that he's getting for doing this now. I don't think that should take away from what Dawson's doing, though. And I think that more people are on board now. Maybe not as many creators, but he still did blow some fucking wild shit open in that second video when we get to it. So now that I've explained Mm -hmm. some of the ways that Mr. Beast lies to build trust with his audience, I want to go on to explain how he exploits that trust for profit through running illegal lotteries, selling fake signatures, giving children diabetes and more. A call to action is simply when you tell the viewer to do something, saying subscribe is a call to action. Early in his career, Mr. Beast found a better version of this where he takes a call to action and he adds positive or negative reinforcement to it. Now as adults, we can recognize that subscribe for a cookie is a joke. Uh, It's not a real offer, but again, Mr. Beast's audience is primarily children who may have authorities in their life that actually use sweet treats or video game detentions as forms of reinforcement, and you aren't born understanding sarcasm. Whatever the reason, these reinforced call to actions are more effective than just saying subscribe. Oh, but there's an even much better version. The call to action giveaway. If you guys want to win a brand new PS5, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel. I can't believe people are still doing fucking giveaways. Holy (laughs) shit, it's so annoying. Stop this fucking shit. I'm so tired of it. Fucking 10 years of YouTube. People are still like buying subs with this shit. So over the next seven days, I'm going to be giving a thousand random people that subscribe a free Samsung Galaxy S24. How is this legal? I don't get it. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel. All you have to do to enter to win one of these phones is subscribe. It's a scam. Holy shit. I literally spent over a million dollars on these phones. And we literally found him one minute before Zach. I spent over a million dollars on these phones. All you have to do to enter is hit that subscribe button. Samsung, I just want you to love me. So yeah, that's what a call to action giveaway (laughs) is at best. You know, hot, hot take here. But Felix, in my eyes, is still the the greatest YouTuber because he's the only one that actually built up his channel organically. He's not a big corporation like T Series, and he didn't do the bullshit giveaway shit like Mr. Beast. Yeah, no, he started still... he started the Markiplier route, screaming at video games. Yeah, rightfully so. Like some of those games are fucking scary. Like, <laughs> like oh yeah, like, did you guys know that? Uh, since we're talking about Markiplier, uh, did you know that FNAF had its tenth anniversary? Yes. Jesus Christ. Yep. <laughs> you feel old yet? <laughs> yeah, that like fucking Roseanne, like Rosanna Pansino was like two years ago. <laughs> and I thought it was literally a couple months. Ago? Like, Wait, who? Like, Rosanna <laughs> that, Yeah, that's who. That's who the the girl was that that was accusing Mr. Beast of the contest. That's her name. Oh. Uh, that was two years ago. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought it was a couple months ago. Like, I thought you were just making up something there. It was like I was no. like Rosanna. <laughs> yeah, like... yeah, no, that, that's her name, Rosanna Pansino. I remember that name because I hate her so much. <laughs> wow, what a fucking Italian name, Pansino. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, Not to be confused with Pants Suela. Or, <laughs> or anyway. It's like Jack and Shirtanino. Oh my god. 
they are a way to buy subscribers, but much of the time they are legitimate scams. Either a YouTuber doesn't actually give away a prize, or in the case of these live streams, they are illegal lotteries where the only way to win a prize is by making a purchase. And obviously I'm not a lawyer, so I'm just gonna show you the law and then show you irrefutable evidence of what's being done and you can make your own conclusions. The FTC defines a lottery as containing three elements, a valuable prize, random chance, and consideration, which can be time or effort, but in most cases is just payment. To successfully run a contest or a sweepstakes, you must eliminate one of these factors. A contest, for example, eliminates chance, and a sweepstakes eliminates consideration. In determining if any Mr. Beast giveaways have been illegal lotteries, we need to identify a prize, which is distributed through random chance and cannot be won without spending money. On August 2nd, 2020, Mr. Beast livestreamed him and his friends signing limited edition shirts celebrating 40 million subscribers. Uh, and here are just some of the clips from that stream. For, for those of you who are just joining, if you buy one of our limited edition uh, 40 mil special shirts, we're celebrating 40 million subscribers with a really big video, then we oh, will man. sign that shirt and some of them will I get random prizes you. like this. The way how they did this, they're really doing a disservice to Dick Clark. <laughs> I want to hear how so. <laughs> Wasn't he the one who would do all those like uh, charity fundraisers with the telethons and everything on TV? Like he'd have yeah. um, Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, and all the other crooners on. Yeah, him or yeah. Jerry Lewis, because I remember Jerry's kids. Yeah, Jerry Lewis did a lot of them too. Well, um, the funny thing with that is that uh, my stepdad's name is Jerry, so we kind of came up with the grift of we should be entitled to the money at any of the gas stations we go to. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. I, I'd yeah. like to see you argue the point, but, but I mean, just the setup that they have here just kind of just reminded me of the, like those telethon setups. It's just they're doing it over the internet. It's still like using a different interface. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really is. It's like, where's the music? Where's the showmanship? This just looks like a fucking table that you would set up at outside of a garage sale. It looks like like the most oppressed panel at comic con yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> like oh yeah i'll sign your your lolly oh my your god the art of myself shad man like it really does yeah, yeah, i gotta minutes, ask because right? like, we gotta give since you brought up the whole Shadman thing, you know how they were showing the uh, how someone found a video where after chris supposedly moved out of the apartment with mr beast do you think he actually bought that picture, or do you think Mr. Beast bought it for him? I think I think Chris bought a... it for himself or herself or themselves, well, uh, why... all themselves, the whole audience. Well, <laughs> but why did they leave it behind though? It's like you would think if that's something you'd bought, you'd take it with you if you moved and everything. I know everyone's like saying that oh it was like fake drama and whatnot that he moved out, but it, like. He probably legitimately did, but like, why leave that behind if you were so enamored with it? I don't know I'm about still kind of grown for the loop, but your question is <laughs> is it lolly or welfare lolly? <laughs> no, I'm just asking. No, I'm asking the question did is like, is Mr. Beast did he want to keep that as a as a like a keepsake? A or, yeah. <laughs> Like he, like he might be into that shit himself. We, st I remembered when we ordered pizza and stared longingly <laughs> at this on the wall. Come back to me, Chris. <laughs> Come back. I was gonna go with the simpler uh, explanation of maybe forgot it. It didn't mean that much, and it's not like their friendship was destroyed at that time to where they would never get it back. Mm. Oh, you hold so... on to my child porn for me? <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? Like, you have to be, like, bold if your friendship is like, can you hold on to this illegal material, please? I mean, you'd like... have to be bold or dense. So... I mean, I mean they, they literally set a pedophile down for dinner and decided to hire him anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I raped an 11 year old. You, you don't say. Yeah. Did you You're want, hired. Did you want more rolls, honey? Do you want more of this? I'll go get you some more. <laughs> Why? When, did, when did Mr. Beast's mom become Jewish? I know it's Hitler hour, but damn. <laughs> it's just, it just automatically what comes to mind when I think of mothers. <laughs> That, that's a that's a heavy statement. <laughs> I kind of don't. I'm, 
<laughs> well, well, kind look, of prod I mean... into that a little bit. <laughs> well, look, most mothers are overbearing. It's not just the Jewish ones. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but that's a very, very specific accent, Gigi. <laughs> Like, look, I don't know why you guys are making this weird. <laughs> I mean, this whole situation is weird. We're talking about a dude that went out to dinner with his with his like employer and the employer's mother talking about their sex offender registry. Nothing about this is not weird. Uh, you know, since we're on that subject, what do you think of Jake's fucking excuse? Like, I've seen it happen to many athletes, really. Oh my god. Back then I, in 2010. Yeah, but here's the thing, Jake. Your brother wasn't an athlete. <laughs> Done. I don't recall any athletes yeah. raping children. Like I don't I mean it happens occasionally, but like not everyone's R. Kelly. Or I mean <laughs> Again, it's like being falsely accused is like he was in a group of people that was falsely accused because that's what you said in your tweet. So was he part of a rape gang or what? It's so falsely it's accused. Like, it's like, to, did a bunch of complete. like did a bunch of fifteen and sixteen year olds run a train on eleven year old? That's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah. Is what he's being accused. Your of. rationalization yeah. here is not making it better. <laughs> right like I, I like i think it's like even worse for you now you're arguing this my... as a w and it's not buddy here's my question though and this is a question that's been like burning my mind do you think that when they had dinner to discuss it do you think it was at jimmy's home or do you think they went out to like texas roadhouse and they're like eating like publicly like <laughs> Can you tell me about this this offender <laughs> registry thing? As like the waiters, like, please just, do you want extra rolls? I don't. I really don't want to hear this. Well, yeah, I raped an eleven year old. Would you like the rolls, please? Like, they're just like increasingly uncomfortable. I now have this whole. <laughs> you would have to go to an Italian restaurant to make the conversation seem natural. <laughs> Well, with the Jewish mother. <laughs> the Jewish wait, mother, yes. wait so how many? How many? How many Italian restaurants have you been where, like, you have to, where you hear somebody set them, like, did you really fuck that eleven-year-old? What kind of Italian restaurants do you have out where you live? Uh, the ones that where they talk with their hands. <laughs> well, I'm more or less just going with the methodology of like, if you talk about cheese pizza in an Italian restaurant, it kind of sounds natural. <laughs> why not just go to the pizza place it's like <laughs> um, it's like all right now tell me how you bake the linguine like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> now tell me what did you put your bread stick in anything <laughs> you know here's the funny thing it's like you know how fucking uh ikea like serves meatballs at their fucking furniture store yeah you remember the other code word was like cabinets and everything for oh that yes one. yes yeah so literally they could just be pretending to buy furniture and eating meatballs on a stick <laughs> are we talking like pre-horse meat meatballs or post-horse meat meatballs uh, i don't know there's fetish so <laughs> oh my god We've gotten way off time. Yeah. Give <laughs> them time to, to do their cart. We'll give two orders five hundred dollars each. Five right. minutes, someone's getting three grand in their someone, order. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put a thousand dollars in a random order. Two minutes, newest order gets two thousand dollars. Good luck, everybody. So this was a six-hour live stream. Uh, they took it down off YouTube, but five hours of it are still up on their Facebook page. Uh, and during those five hours, I counted. 46 illegal lotteries. These lotteries are also run poorly multiple times. They would say something like, buy in the next five minutes for a chance to win. And then seven minutes later go, actually, the newest order in 30 seconds is gonna win. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Hey, Daryl, don't we owe someone $1,000? We do. Yeah, so, all right, so the newest order in 30 seconds, we are gonna put $1,000 in your package. Stephen, uh, Stephen K. Okay. Oh, Stephen King. Steve and there is no second giveaway 30 seconds later, like Jimmy said. Uh, this is just one very shady giveaway. Uh, they just go on to talk about how Stephen made a profit. Stephen's a handsome man. So he actually walked away with some money. We're proud of you, Stephen. 
I counted 13 of these extra shades. <laughs> Can you imagine if that's like did. the author, Stephen King? <laughs> There's like, he's like just sitting there. He's like, yes, Mr. Beast. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wouldn't be the first time he supported a pedophile. Mm. Oh. Mm. oh. Did not give the prize in the original time frame that they said. Okay, so we're going to put two iPhones in this pinata and we're going to give it to someone who orders a shirt in three minutes. Five minutes. Buy a limited edition shirt or hoodie, and we're gonna pick a random one in 10 minutes and give them $2,000. Have we done iPhones yet? Yeah. Oh, we did Let's one. Oh wait, hey yeah. Daryl, first action, before we do that, we never picked the pinata. So these clearly fit the definition of an illegal lottery. These clips are also not out of context. No one ever said no purchase necessary. There's nothing in the description or on the website. At one point, Mr. Beast is informed you know, there is a fair point I do kind of want to raise with this. How is this any different than, like, say, a QVC or something like that, where, like, if you buy in the next five minutes, you will get this additional thing? A QVC? Yeah. Because well, that's a guaranteed, that's not random chance, that's an offer. That's a limited time True. offer versus the okay. versus well, the, actually, the chance at something. Well, no that's, no, that's not, like, so much as an offer. That's, like, an... Okay, you're talking about like an infomercial, correct? Like a home shopping network, uh, QVC is. Yeah, okay, the that best deal one. is always, that deal is always on the board. They use that as a pressuring method. If you remember it when you call in, like at any time of the day, whenever they have the order, you know, guy there to pick up the phone, if you mention, it's like, look, the infomercial said in the next 15 minutes, and I just saw it like five minutes ago, can I get that? I was like, yeah, sure, because they're always going to offer it. That way it's not like a scam. Okay. Yeah, and it's also like, it's also an offer. It's not like a lottery. You're guaranteed to get that if you order it, as opposed to where this is. Just oh, if one you order in the next person. Yeah, if you order in yeah. the next five minutes, you have a chance for this because then that discounts everybody that ordered in the past ten minutes that yeah, didn't exactly. know that this lottery was going on. So basically, those kinds of infomercials, it's it's a pressuring tactic. It basically hits the right nodes. Say like, there's a time limit. Better call now. It's like a, a sense of urgency is what they're trying to instill yeah. with that. I'm just, that's how they get around it. I'm just trying to look at things like and try and think of any similar scenarios or situations that well, would I mean, potentially any other be scenario. Like would be like run by either a legit company, not Mr. Beast. Yeah. So they know not to fuck around with that. It's like if you're offering it and you just want to use it as a pressuring tactic, that's fine. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to move units when you're selling stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. At that <clears throat> point, it's more of like it's it's a useful, like GG was saying, a way to like get you to buy things. Yeah, psychological manipulation. Yeah, and oftentimes, too, what people will do when they say that, it's stuff that they wanted to clear out of the warehouse anyway. So they're yeah. kind of trying to spurn you to order it so they don't lose as much on it. Mm -hmm. okay. That's how they can like run it as a commercial rather than a dedicated show at a time slot. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, too, it's also because it's not a lottery. Like You're guaranteed it as a first uh, as long as Mr. you're within Beast that period, doing. yeah, where this yeah, is just yeah. one Mr. dedicated winner. Yeah, it's the chance factor, guarantee versus po pro like probability. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of different scenarios. Form that they ran out of PlayStations, and he says, "Are we trying to not sell merch?" Uh, our city is sold out of PlayStations. We don't have any. We have to give away. <laughs> Are we trying to not sell merch? <laughs> So he clearly knows that they're making more money by running these illegal lotteries. Another shady thing he did was constantly suggest that they're doing too many giveaways to make a profit. My guy over there doing the numbers is like, stop, stop please. Like, you do realize every time you give away an Xbox and a thousand dollars, you don't make money. I'm like, oh, I know we're not gonna make money. What are we doing guys? We're gonna check after this stream and it's gonna be like, like, oh no. What a waste. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We're gonna break neutral. When there is just no way they were ever even close to losing money on this stream. I don't know who this is, but you just got a pair of AirPods. Oh my gosh, we're not making money. Guys, we need to stop giving everyone something. We've just like, lost like seven Almost grand. everything, almost everything that someone's bought, we put something in their package. I'm not gonna make so money. You... In five hours, they gave away about $50,000 worth of stuff uh, and sold over 50,000 t-shirts. Selling these t-shirts at $42 each, profit margin would be about $22. But even if they were making like $1 per shirt, they would still be fine. 
Uh, also, by my estimates, only one in every 1,600 orders actually won a prize. And I guarantee he has real-time analytics on his laptop. He knows they make more money every time he says, oh my god, guys, we're giving away so much stuff. We're not even going to make a profit. Please, don't you want me to make a profit? <laughs> That's why he keeps saying it. Also, they just don't show how winners are picked. So it's probably not actually random. You know, humans have biases. Imagine Jimmy tells the guy off camera, hey, pick a name right now. And he sees two names. One is easy to pronounce, one is not. This is why lotteries are heavily regulated to ensure fairness. Also, obviously you have to be 18 to play the lottery. It's gambling. Mr. Beast isn't just promoting gambling to children here. He's running the casino. And this isn't even close to the worst stream he's done. Four months later, Mr. Beast signed shirts again, but this time it was a 24-hour live stream with way more illegal lotteries. And by the way, the rest of these streams were taken down shortly after upload, so all I have is some old clips and Reddit threads talking about them. Now this stream did say, we are doing a ton of giveaways, no purchase necessary in the description, uh, but to be eligible to win most I mean, prizes, seriously, why take them down if they were completely legit on your end, Mr. Beast? Yeah, that's the thing that I haven't been able to get around mentally is the why taking it down. Because those would be re relatively high viewership videos, too. Yeah, it would just add more to the channel. But then again, it's like an eagle-eyed viewer or an employee would be have like more ammo to go against you. I'm trying to think. He probably doesn't want people to like look at Dawson's video and then fact check him and realize that, oh, no, Dawson's actually telling the truth here. But he, he took him down before that. So it's like yeah, the, he took the him why, down way why, before. Why you would take him down before that. Unless it goes into um, like any statements. He doesn't want to be held to any statements that he made in there. I mean, like he the, probably does like, have like a legal team that does like a legal, you know, house cleaning tour of all their videos and whatnot. Well, and so, I think of it as as a legal as a legal standpoint of like if I said, hey, this is the only time i'm ever doing this and then you did it again whether you didn't remember or not it takes away some of the value from that point so and it can be held against you like like he says later on he's like mr b says this is the last time i'm signing shirts and if he signs stuff after that point then it can be held against him which is what what dawson does but that's the like and you know, so by erasing that you would cover up that you ever made that statement and then you would only have to combat like if the person was recording it you know i, I was just thinking of something if and this is like sort of off topic but it ties back to the main people if keen was the mr beast in this situation like if he was actually mr beast i could think of one way how he would like how he would uh do a live stream or a video just to get the heat off of him if he's being accused of all the shit that mr beast is being accused of right now is that he does another like lottery giveaway but from a jail cell and he's in like an orange jumpsuit <laughs> <laughs> he's got like a bunch of like black people pretending to be inmates what? and he's signing shirts oh my <laughs> god <laughs> i could see him doing that as a bit to to get everyone's like you know <laughs> fucking anger to subside because it's like this dude's a fucking clown why am i mad at him like well keem's not beating the racist allegations today well you know how keem would out <laughs> how keem would run that though it would be a members only mm -hmm. stream <laughs> yeah and then you just get like screenshots of it it's like what the fuck is he doing <laughs> like oh keem faked being arrested just like boogie faked cancer what a yeah. surprise, more kayfabe. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I could see him doing that. <laughs> and he would have, like, when the when the prison guard would come in, that, that stupid soundboard. <laughs> it's yeah. like the, the prison guard. <laughs> the prison guard would be wings. Oh my god. Eating a donut. <laughs> it's, it's time to <laughs> With a turn the live club. stream off there, Keem. Burr, 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 burr. <laughs> It's like, it's like, god damn. Oh. I'm, I'm, just, I'm dying inside just fucking scripting it in my head. Dude, it just popped into my head when I was thinking about it. Like, what would Keem do to respond to the situation if this were him? <laughs> I, mean, I, I prefer 2016 Keem where he would just shout the N-word. 
then like <laughs> call everyone an N word and then fucking cut the stream. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I just said that it's like it'd be pretty funny. Yeah. It'd be funny. It's a one shot go though. <laughs> <laughs> what they could do is they could arrest Boogie for lying and faking cancer, like, you know, donation fraud. Throw his throw his fat ass in there. I mean, if Keem wants to be like a fu- wants to run a fucking circus, he might as well be in the fucking cage as a monkey himself. Oh my god, I'm just seeing Boogie have a breakdown over an ice cream machine right now in my head, and it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> would you guys prefer? Would you prefer that we throw money in random orders, or that we throw items in random orders? Yeah. Somebody guys- screamed in chat. I want to switch. Hey. Buy a shirt. In 30 minutes, we are giving away my car to someone that buys merch. Which each giveaway is its own independent event. You can't give one prize to someone who buys something and a different prize to someone in chat. The prize where you have to buy something is still an illegal lottery, which obviously Mr. Beast knows this, but you know, he's a he's a poker player. He likes a little bluffery, a little plausible deniability, you know, pretending to be ignorant of the law. You know, YouTube's a little different than this. Um, yeah. Because YouTube, I can just do stuff like that. I can just be like, you know what? Pull up a database of 100 people that bought chocolate bars and pick 100 random ones. Got it. I think I can do that over here. I don't know. So mm. I don't want to say anything. And then someone would be like, yeah, actually, that's illegal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I could not find any way to enter the big Tesla giveaway without spending at least $42. And we're giving away a Tesla to someone random who bought stuff. They also gave away 24 tickets, which gave you the opportunity to be in a video. Again, and again most it's of these like tickets, that person's not going to get that Tesla. Now we know where all of Boogie's money went. He's <laughs> like, I, I'll get my Tesla no, no. one way or another. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm saying it's like he, that dude would have to owe taxes on a gift. Yeah. Yeah. That's why a lot not, of people were, got pissed with Oprah. Not, not to mention like the title registration fees and everything. Yep. <clears throat> transfer fees and they typically what you have to do is offer a cash equivalent mm-hmm. yeah thank you oprah <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can you imagine that going to like a show and being like yay i just want a car by the way you get a bill for like freaking like six thousand dollars for the tax and you're like what had to make a purchase to win one random person that buys in what time frame 10 minutes we're gonna put this in someone's order that buys something and we're gonna have 24 yeah. people we're gonna put them in 24 different circles million dollars on the line have some fun you know what i'm saying also this video never happened there is no mr beast video of 24 people in circles competing for a million dollars unless it ended up being 100 people in a circle competing for five hundred thousand dollars. but that's a smaller prize and much worse odds so like, did they just pocket the money or what? Hey, it's the pilot guy. Woo! Let's get it! Wait, he's about to be the first one out? That's unlike him. And though you got out first, I still have a prize for you. Just wait here. Oh, first person out gets a car and it just happened to be your friend Mac. Another thing that just annoys me is Jimmy constantly <laughs> says during these live streams that He's just doing this for fun because he loves giving things away. Oh, and I just like giving away stuff. It's kind of funny. Imagine you just lost a bunch of money at the casino and the owner comes out and he says, guys, the reason I do all this, I just love giving away money. Uh, Also, you're seven years old in that example. It's insane that he can flip these (laughs) massively profitable illegal lotteries targeted towards children as an act of generosity. So I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to go place an order at shopmrbeast.com. Anyone watching any of the lives? And um, we're gonna throw iPhones in some of them. And again, there are very few videos of this live stream on the internet. I think Mr. Beast probably copyright strikes re-uploads. But almost yeah. any clip you do find will have here. some new violation of screen. internet gambling Come or on. sweepstakes oh. law. Pause, Jesus. And I'm like clicking on the video. <laughs> Depending on what model your Tesla he was giving away, he could have he could have been giving people like a ticking time bomb. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know what's really sad? Yeah. That second statement right there that's like all running over each other. Yep. My fucking ARG brain is like, what happens if you take that, unscramble it, run it through a hexadecimal, <laughs> and 
cut it up in like a the shape of a pentagram and like it feeds you back coordinates to a warehouse where they are like shipping in children from like Africa or whatever where they built the wells for Chris Tyson. Like some sort of like off the wall like Fucking like... Are you saying I need to speed this video up? <laughs> I can speed the video I... up. He just had to ask. <laughs> I don't know, but like I'm wondering if like you know you do all that and you find out the warehouse where they're storing like Chris Tyson's victims, <laughs> like, <laughs> like some crazy shit like that. <laughs> I'm gonna speed the video up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought it was him. I was like, you oh, really? Let's go! Wait, it's literally like, it's like, who is it? Really? Actually, that's illegal. Some of the common complaints we see in threads about this live stream are that they only signed large t-shirts. So when they selected an order to give a prize, it was apparently always a large or extra large t-shirt. They kept saying things like, buy in the next 15 minutes for a chance to win, and then not honoring it. Multiple people claiming that their name was read to win a prize, and they never received it. This person is still tweeting about it to this day. Now there's a lot more people complaining about the deceptive sales tactics. Reading all this really upsets me, because I spent money I honestly didn't have for five shirts at different times during the live when they said things like, buy now. By the way, chat, this is fucking stupid. Don't do this. If you don't have the money, don't spend it. I like how that's like, you know, by the way, if you're not fucking fat, no autograph for you. We only give autographs to the fatty. <laughs> oh, man. You talking from experience there, Pat? No, no. Uh, don't have the money. Don't spend. Don't buy shit. Yeah, no. Uh... I mean, come on. We're both car guys. We know we've done it. <laughs> oh, I've bought plenty of shit on credit. I had the money. I just am also awful at saving the money. <laughs> I have the money next week. I was yeah, I was more race the drags. I was more buy it on credit, pay for it later. <laughs> oh man. Now and you will get prize or money. And I received two orders and nothing but shirt, both with MB and one with a heart and one with a smiley. I was hoping for at least a couple things for Christmas for my family. Now, this commenter also goes on to explain that she's disabled, has PTSD. Lotteries and scams specifically target vulnerable populations like that. I'm disappointed. My son bought a signed shirt and was so excited. He watched the live stream and saw that people who bought would receive $100. He was excited and be a part of his favorite streamer, Mr. Beast. When the shirt arrived, he was grinning from ear to ear. When he realized that there was no $100, he was visibly disappointed. He said nothing other than, I guess he meant everyone except me. He loves his shirt, but I'm really upset seeing him hurt. And obviously people can lie on the internet, but a lot of people are independently claiming the same things. Like that at the end of the live stream, they said they were putting $100 in every order. Now, my speculation is that they put $100 in every order that came across the table that they signed, but I'd be interested to see how they worded that. If the video of this live stream ever resurfaces, I, I think a lot of these claims will be proven true, uh, which Mr. Beast definitely has this stream saved. He saves all his footage. Uh, so I'll ask you, Jimmy, will you publish this to prove your innocence? Also, using archive.org, we can see what the website looked like on the day of the stream, and while there's no mention of any sweepstakes whatsoever, uh, it does say this limited tea signed by Mr. Beast and crew, uh, but the description says it's signed by a member of the Mr. Beast crew, and it doesn't say anywhere that other members will sign MB, deceiving people into believing it was signed by Mr. Beast. So here's a clip of Tyler forging, or not, maybe not forging, using Mr. Beast's signature. So Tyler signs MB, which is Mr. Beast's signature, then he covers it, signs his own initials, TC, smirks, looks around, and then quickly slides the shirt away. Could you make it any more obvious? You know, you don't accidentally have someone else's signature as muscle memory. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I think this is fraud. Maybe they could say it's the brand's signature, even though it's clearly implied that this is Jimmy's signature, which was established during the last live stream. Cool. Hey, Good job, B, cameraman. So this is <laughs> focus harder on the... Please focus harder on the fraud. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I've got a head cannon now that the fucking camera guy was Delaware. Can you imagine if plot twist it was Dawson? He set this up like four years ago. <laughs> oh my god, the long. Oh, you the only long worked player. there like long four gun. months ago. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's still my head cannon. Is it right? No, but like I'm not out here painting a narrative. I'm just enjoying the show in my head. Oh my god. Mr. Beast signature. No way, this one was signed by Mr. Beast. It's just got the MB, but it, that means it's signed by Mr. Beast. That's obviously his, Mr. Beast. This is so cool. That's obviously his, Mr. Beast. You know, some people bought these shirts as collector's items or even investments, and this puts into question the authenticity of all Mr. Beast signed merch, which otherwise could have been very valuable one day. This was clearly muscle memory, and judging by his body language, he knew he exposed this. Even Tariq notices Tyler slip up and immediately looks into the camera, looks guilty, and then readjusts his body and rubs his hands together. Also, Mr. Beast said during the live stream that this is the last time he'd ever sign anything, and that was just a lie. Illegal lotteries targeted towards children and selling fake signatures. I mean, imagine if any other YouTuber was caught doing this. You're oh, very smart with your money.
You want to know what's a great thing about me never being able to do this? I'm left-handed. I, I like that. It's like, I'm never, I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to sign anything other again. Plot twist, he already wasn't. It was his friends. I'm never going to sign anything again. Mr. Beast, we have a contract here for with Amazon. You need to sign it. It's like, can you sign my paycheck? Mr. Beast starts sweating profusely. <laughs> Millions of dollars on YouTube videos is a gambler. Who would have thought? By this point, Mr. Beast noticed a problem with these CTA giveaways. I mean, obviously they're illegal, but more importantly, they're not as profitable as they could be. Look at it like this. There are two value propositions at play here. The perceived value of the product and the perceived value of the chance to win a prize. So for something like these $42 t-shirts, if the viewer values the chance to be in a video at $10, they need to value the t-shirt at an additional $32 to make the purchase. So the more expensive the product, the less effective the lottery is. You want to get the product as close to $0 as possible, so people are just paying for the perceived value of the lottery. That's By the way, like, I'm totally, I'm waiting for you guys to catch on to something. If, if you don't catch on to it, I'm going to point it out. But there is something that, like, goes to my point of, like... There's other things with this video. The whole video, okay. it's a little suspicious. I, I'll just say, in my opinion, as somebody who worked for Mr. Beast, I don't think this large YouTuber want to take it purely by chance. Also, I know that producers are sort of able to pull strings behind the scenes to give some contestants better chances than others. And he runs these sweepstakes to like bribe children with gambling to consume more sugar. Like this is far worse than a lottery ticket because a lottery ticket doesn't give you diabetes and only pay out your rich and famous friends. Mm -hmm. Like Mr. Beast is bringing hundreds of thousands, if not millions well, of people Well, usually you buy, di you buy tickets in while you have diabetes so you can cure it. <laughs> <laughs> Once or not. People are just walking to the chocolate aisle and instead of buying Hershey's, buying Feast Pools. Like, do you, people who never would have bought chocolate in Walmart are walking mm. to the chocolate aisle specifically to buy Feast Pools. So, exactly, I'm, bringing... I'm making people fat. <laughs> New customers to the aisle. Okay, yeah. Wow, wow, that's so kind of a weird flag. So based of you, Mr. Beast. <laughs> America ain't thought of this one before. I'm gonna like, make them fat. <laughs> like, like, he's just like, no, no, look, guys, look. I'm, I've groomed my child fan base to eat chocolate. Yeah. yeah it's like diet I coke i can eat cake now and he's like looking at them all confused he's like no you don't get it i groomed children <laughs> and everybody's like jimmy shut up yeah, yeah. you don't know what you're making it sound like or does he wait wait is the whole point that you're pointing out here is that mr beast wants to groom children so he hired people who specialize in that category uh, AKA I'm not, pedophiles. I'm not saying that legally. <laughs> Look, I'm just putting. If that's the on. case, it actually works out because that's, of course, why you would hire Delaware because he's got a proven success record. Or Look, Chris Tyson. I'm just, I'm just putting the dots out there, and if you connect a line between them, that's not. Hey. Look. If, if, that's not me. Look, I just put the dots there. If you found Chris, them together, like no Chris wonder. Tyson was more of a rookie all star pick. Okay. Delaware was definitely the professional pick. Okay? He was a veteran. <laughs> it's like, no wonder why fucking Nickelodeon hired that foot fetish freak. <laughs> It's like, no wonder why companies protect pedophiles because they need their grooming expert on how to market the kids. Also, maybe I should mention technically I'm a certified nutritionist, which really just means I paid $1,200 for a course and I failed to launch a health food company. But I know that poor diet and especially excessive sugar consumption is the number one cause of death and health problems in America, including some of the health problems that Mr. Beast claims to care so much about. Blindness, deafness, loss of limbs. Mr. Beast also just launched a combo with Zaxby's, which if you get a soda, it's over 2,000 calories for one meal. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. The only thing real in this video is the new Mr. Beast box at Zaxby's. I'm pretty sure this would be a in europe this is like more calories yeah, in one we may have an obesity animals. epidemic but we do now have an obesity <laughs> God, I, I couldn't <laughs> work it <laughs> you know what an, obese, just... an obesity epidemic <laughs> i'm just gonna throw it out there after he's describing that box all boogie has to do is eat one of them and he has his cancer well all he has... he has to do is eat one zaxby's feastable box and he has I his mean, cancer he, he would have like his heart attack too <laughs> two for one here's a funny thing i noticed um includes one feastables milk chocolate bar so you have to actually include them in the meal you know what i yeah. always wanted with my piping hot food chocolate a chocolate bar just thrown on top have you never had a hot fudge <laughs> no but i've never had a hot fudge chicken <laughs> 
I'm sure there's someone out there, preferably in the South, of a certain demographic who's tried that. <laughs> if we've what? got chicken and waffles, I'm just saying. See, what well, you're you're forgetting it. This is why Mr. Beats is so brilliant, and he's trying to get you to eat healthy. You're supposed to order the the milk with it. So that way you can pour the gross, disgusting melted chocolate into the milk and make your own chocolate milk. Oh, okay. Uh. He's, that's, <laughs> oh, he's helping you get healthy. He's making you cut out the Diet Coke. No, he, chocolate. I have no he's idea. He's cutting out the middleman to make chocolate milk. I have no idea how how this thing could be so unhealthy, by the way. French fries, fried chicken, a bread side, and chocolate. Man, that's a lot <laughs> of breading. Imagine, imagine like the, the side includes bread. <laughs> it's like you got breaded chicken, you got <laughs> breaded French fries, and you got bread. If a lot of like breading. Look at, that's like a carbohydrate wet dream right there. <laughs> like you have everything. You have so much like breading and starch. It's like that, KFC's like, double down. <laughs> right? I can feel it. I'm like having a heart attack looking at it. Supposed to consume on a daily basis. You just have Tell two chicken patties, oh. a piece of cheese, and oh, bacon wait. in between. Wait. I just noticed that. What? Hold on. There's two slices of bread. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's generous. You, I you, get, a, you, you get a bread side with your bread side. What is what is this comedy? What is this the USSR? Well, you can make it a sandwich. You can put the bread in it and then throw the the fries on top, like that other fancy restaurant. And then you can slather the top in your melted chocolate. No, no, this is like KFC. If it was in the USSR, you got the Zaxby's version of it, where it's like, look, you must have bread on your menu. Like, you could serve chicken, but a little bit, but make sure it's covered in bread. <laughs> That just that also then links with the Russian captioning. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's all related. That they, they are Russian agents to bring down YouTube. I love how I, 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 comrade beast added the bread. <laughs> Duh. Tell me how I'm killing little kids. New research finds childhood obesity rates are getting worse. The number one killer in America is obesity. The number of deaths in overweight people surpass alcohol and smoking altogether. For a 30 day stream, we are going to be giving away $10,000 to a lucky so customer. Why are we raising the prices on, the on cigarettes and booze water. again? It's just disappointing to see somebody pretend to care about the health epidemic. Right, well, we can't. We're trying to like curve it. We can't let them have the easy way out. Oh, come on. This is <laughs> the fun <laughs> way out. <laughs> it's profitable for them. I know this point isn't going to resonate with a lot of people because of how normalized high calorie and high sugar diets are in America, but like bribing children to get into the habit of consuming excessive amounts of sugar, like $10,000 a day. Okay, so they're coming at the fat acceptance from both customers angles. That just buy you have products. complete like, nutter dipshits <laughs> ruining magazines. And then you have Mr. Beast just pushing it on the kids. Actually, when you clearly understand how much of a health risk it is to these kids. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. It, it's honestly just fucking evil to me. And I push back against this a lot while I worked at the company. For Halloween this year, Feastables is planning on putting a million dollars in a chocolate bar. And they wanted to do a bunch of like... You know, this is the inverse of Subway. I said at one <laughs> well... <laughs> I mean, Subway, like, it serves healthy food if you know what to order. But, like, the fucking oh, Feastables thank God. box... Oh, thank God. Well, it, it makes sense Ooh. because with Subway, you have the pedophile eating healthy food. Yeah, right? he loses all that the is, weight. And that's then he's where I thought we were you know, going. Yeah, them damn with Mr. Tuna Beast, subs. It's, it's the inverse. Where you no, have, the veggie like, delights is what he had. No. The veggie delights. You've never heard about the backwards tuna subs with Jared? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything like the Zaxby's box? Right out tuna sub. And read the letters backwards. Oh my god. <laughs> Bust a <That's> nut. <laughs> well, we know Jared was certainly doing that with all those terabytes. <laughs> That's why he said he's always been on them backwards tuna subs. <laughs> I, wonder, now I wonder, like, do you think they made Chris Tyson, like, handle the food stuff? 
be like, look, you're like Jared, but you gotta do it right. And then like <laughs> You gotta do it wrong. right. You just gotta be a complete and utter bastard to kids. You gotta yeah. make him fat. You gotta do all the horrible shit. That way the pedophilia looks less worse in by comparison. Well, you don't want you don't want them to be able to run away from you, right? That. Like you want him to be really fat so you can catch him. <laughs> Oh, oh, one's trying to make it for like, the door. I mean, Aww. here's the thing. Like, even though Jared was a pedophile, he at least tried to give him, like, an exercise camp. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Oh Beast God. is just loading him up with bullshit. <laughs> Dude, my mic cut out there, so it's funny. It's like, even though Jared was a pedophile, then you got in silent. It's like, fuck, they got him. They got him. <laughs> they want to associate I don't know. I guess, I guess Jared home. wanted to compete for his capture, whereas Chris didn't want to. <laughs> he just wanted to lull them into a false sense of security. <laughs> Eat them so they fall asleep. <laughs> Chris Tyson's the sneaky predator where Jared is like, I want a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. True. So they're pitching ideas like, you know, buy a feastables, win 10k, uh, buy a feastables out of a vending machine, and the vending machine just starts spitting out money, buy a feastables and it has a ticket to Disney World, whatever, right? And I don't want to put a lot of like hearsay into this video. You should just believe the receipts that I'm showing you and not what I'm saying. But I swear to God, I said to somebody at the company, I feel like Feastables is 70% a chocolate company and 30% a lottery targeted targeting children. And this higher up person at Mr. Beast said it was probably closer to the other way around and was laughing about it. Like 70% a lottery, 30% a chocolate company. Everyone knows it's just the call to actions and call to action giveaways especially that drive sales. As soon as they stop, it's hard for large bargain retailers to sell this shit for 70% off. That's why they push them so hard. Once they stop their diabetes lottery, no one buys. Also, this is the website right now. Mr. Beast wants you to join the crew. Just so weird and scummy to me. I believe all the Feastables giveaways do have official rules and no purchase necessary clauses somewhere, but it's very difficult to find them. In traditional media, if you advertise a sweepstakes like in a commercial, you have to say in the promotional material itself, no purchase necessary. Somehow Mr. Beast gets away with not saying no purchase necessary in any of his promotional materials, not the videos, the descriptions, pinned comments, nothing. By the way, I don't know how how dog pack Dawson here knows about Dunkaroos, but those fuckers were gone for like 15 fucking years. So I don't understand how he, he knew to use a Dunkaroos commercial there. I don't know, but I'm happy they're back. Are you? I th I was disappointed by them. I tried them I'm once. pretty sure he has an older brother who told okay. him about it. Look, I ate them just like I did my Oreo O's and all the other shit from my childhood. <laughs> Your Oreo <laughs> All right? <laughs> I, I'm not eating them because they're good. I'm eating them because I have an un I'm unhealthy in the mind, and I want to go back to my childhood where I don't have problems. So, yeah. eat your or it's like eat your Oreos so your arteries. Yeah, yeah. See, it, it served its point. I was transported back to my childhood, and I forgot about my miserable life for about thirty seconds. So, so, so of milk really. Who lost here? <laughs> oh, we went out, we bought 10 Teslas, loads of cash, and all these prices you see on the screen. And prices aside, unlike Hershey's, these bars only have four to five ingredients and just genuinely taste good. Go to feastables.com right now and order some chocolate. Only problem is the chocolate river is deteriorating all the cake. The only place you'll find no purchase necessary is either on the Feastables Twitter account because it's a rule of the platform and even still they try to push it. No purchase oh God. or hidden deep just, in the Feastables website something. under a FAQ mark for a chance to win $5,000 shelfie cleanup in $5,000 drawing. They thought this was going to be a monthly thing, uh, but it got a lot of controversy, obviously. How can I successfully clean up the shelves? Wow, glad you asked. No bars on the shelf? Go find an employee and ask them to check to see if there is product in the back room and ask them to bring them out so you can put it on the shelf to match the tags. What the f dude? Imagine a seven-year-old looking for the Walmart manager so he can ask to stock shelves for a chance to be compensated? Dude, was Walmart in on this? This was not just one off-the-cuff tweet. This was, like, planned with instructions not and to mention, and everything. Also, a company asked... If, like, just just on the pure chance of it, like, you know, criminals work at Walmart, too. And <laughs> if you're looking for someone who's, you know, to be in the back rooms to bring out the product, that's usually where they put all the convicts that, you know, <laughs> got out. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw... You're, look, story... You're running, <laughs> you're running the chance of a kid meeting either... A murderer, a bank robber, or another pedophile. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm going to throw this out there. I was a manager at Walmart. 
I guarantee you, if a kid walked up to me and asked me to put chocolate on the shelf, I would give that child that chance because I guarantee you he was fucking more competent than any of the employees underneath me. (laughs) I guarantee you that kid would probably be like like a manager underneath me within two weeks compared to the fuckwits that were under me. (laughs) That kid would have been able to actually read the tag, I bet, and actually put them on the shelf and not, you know, like being like some sort of like low IQ, like, duh, I don't know what tag says. Okay, you see where that says, you know, cracker? You put the cracker there. You don't put the cheese it there. That goes where the cheese it tag is. I'm sorry, I'm just, ha- I just have some like, bent yeah. up. Like, I wish more people would do this kind of shit for content, like what we're doing, where we're just cracking <laughs> jokes over a serious topic video. Yeah, like we, we get the serious bullshit out of the way within the first, like, you know, hour, and then the last two are just us cracking jokes. Last two, you mean like last eight? Yeah, last eight. <laughs> Poor Patrick is over here, like, I was a three and a half hour stream, that was four hours ago. <laughs> I'm never going to get to bed. A little bit weird. And while you're at it, if you want to maybe move some Hershey's bars and make sure that Feastables has plenty of space, I wouldn't complain. Wah. I just cannot believe they were going to give $5,000 to one of Mr. Beast's child laborers for stocking shelves. And no one at Mr. Beast was like, hey, this is a terrible idea. Actually, if you said that, you'd probably get fired. This is the best taste of chocolate on earth. Good job, boys. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do we know that's the best taste of chocolate in the world? You're fired. What? This is such horse shit. You can do that? I mean, that is a bit of a stretch. Yeah. The most shocking result was that Feastables never earned anything higher than a third place ranking. But I do think their branding is like world's best chocolate bar is, um, is how, do you, how do you get away with that? World's best chocolate. World's best pizza. What does that even, what does that even, what does that even fucking De- mean? Define that yourself. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, ask I Bethesda in Fallout 4 how it got game of the year status. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, we yes. won it for Fallout 3. But uh, we wanted it for Fallout 4. See, like, I know the right person. I feel like <laughs> this is a little pedantic, too. Because, like, this plays into the bit of the world's best cup of coffee. Like, do you guys remember the movie Elf? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. With the You guys have the world's best cup of coffee? Do you want to go for the world's be- Like, it's a gimmick. <laughs> yeah, but I, I kind of see what Dawson's doing I know, here. It's I, like, I know what he's saying. Like, how can you make a claim when it's yeah? But well, it's like you know you have world's best chocolate, and then your chocolate's like actual dog shit. So oh, it's yeah, like, it's ah, like ah, ah, you kind of really suck. Sort of like yeah. I mean, bring it to me and Pat's world. You know the JD Power Association yeah. trophy that they oh, always get. Fucking that thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's a complete and utter scam. Yeah. <laughs> Look, not everybody, not every video can be like super pedophile hour. Sometimes we need a, like a little lighthearted, <laughs> <ribbing>. super pedophile <laughs> hour. You know, like every so often we need a little bit of like funny <laughs> stuff. And we're not, you, you know, dog shit chocolate's funny. And then we can go into the pedophiles later. And thanks to Mr. Beast. We, we can get do both it. in one video. In topic. <laughs> yeah, we, we can, we're, we're staying in topic too. So, like, really, Mr. Beast is actually doing us all a favor by hiring pedophiles. <laughs> you go put that thought out on the internet and see how that goes. <laughs> hey, I didn't say I didn't say that I was, I liked the idea. He said he's doing underlying us a favor. This. It's just grooming children. Yeah, in any which with way. Sweets, either for sweets or pee pee, like, <laughs> like it works the same. It's just grooming children. What flavor do you want? Oh my god! <laughs> for sweets, <laughs> twinks the Twinkies. We got it all. I, I, it's I'm sure it's a good thing I don't care about being canceled. Okay, one last point of consideration. <laughs> Prolonged attention is definitely a form of consideration. In the attention economy, it is the valuable resource that advertisers directly pay Mr. Beast for. So in these live streams when Mr. Beast says, hey guys, today we're doing a bunch of illegal lotteries, but also we're going to be giving away some free stuff to people who keep watching. He does that to boost viewer numbers. I'm going to give you guys a reason to keep watching, okay? Here's what I'm going to do. Um, randomly, I'm not going to tell you when. It could be 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour. I'm going to randomly pick one person watching this IG live stream and one person watching this YouTube live stream. I'm going to give you each $5,000. So right. keep watching. Oh, There's wait no a minute. What's that one movie Mr. where Mr. the dude has his eyelids Forced open with a head device. Is that Clockwork Orange? Yes. 
Yeah. That could be worked into the fucking into the South Park episode. Oh my god. <laughs> Where all the kids just have their eyes forced open. <laughs> and they're getting programmed by Chris Tyson. They have to be present when they happen, which means viewers have to keep watching, which is time and effort that directly benefits Mr. Beast. The more viewers, the more money Mr. Beast obviously makes, either directly through sales or AdSense or just getting boosted in the YouTube algorithm. So even the free giveaways could and should be against the law. Mr. Beast just uses gambling psychology to exploit young children for profit. He's just become the first casino where the yeah, currency that would actually work. Because they haven't had like a Kenny centric episode in a long time. Kitty could be like the vehicle for like where all the bad stuff is happening. <laughs> I mean, he fits the profile of where Mr. Beast and all of his friends come from, especially Chris Tyson. Redneck white trash. The most valuable currency in the world. Well, of course. Uh, or labor or money sometimes. Yeah, his core audience is like, I'd say like 10 to 12 year old boys. Older people are a little bit over him. Some people kind of question the ethics, you know, they sometimes say in these videos where he like builds all these wells or, you know, cures people of this blindness. It's almost like he's exploiting people for these views. So older audiences don't love him, but this tween audience, they love him. And they're thinking, Not you know, people, people could get children. <laughs> Get me a car, so why wouldn't I? Okay, now as far as fake giveaways go, I'm sort of limited in what I can say without exposing confidential information and getting sued. So my official statement is that sometimes things slip through the cracks, and personally, I believe that is intentional. Here's one example where someone on Reddit posted saying that they were promised free dog food for life in exchange for letting Mr. Beast use them in a video. Five months later, they still hadn't received their dog food. I actually sent this post to someone who works at Mr. Beast, and they said they were going to send it to the PR team, and then the Reddit post got taken down. So I don't know if it got resolved. <laughs> Here's another example of PR things team. slipping through the cracks. The second thing that I probably would do different is invest. And I know what y'all about to say. Y'all about to go to the clip too, where Jimmy said that we set a certain amount of odds to invest. I know you talked about wanting to maybe invest 50K and then set aside like the other 23 for just other little nuances here and there. This is not me calling anybody a liar or anything because I know what, I know what y'all do. I know what the internet does. But what I think what happened was somebody that worked for Mr. Beast or something like that was also probably help me invest. But that didn't happen. I talked to Jimmy uh, when I, after I won a million dollars, after I finally like, like got the remaining. I don't my, think my, that's his Fortnite account. gameplay. You don't? No. He's not even holding a controller. <laughs> He's not really playing Fortnite, you fucking liar. I don't He's, not single even video. He's not holding the camera. Yeah, see, that's one of those things where it's like, it's funny. It's like one of those like fucking like I faked my gameplay video jokes. Are you are you accusing this young black man of being a sniper wolf? Look, I didn't say anything about him being black. That's you being racist. Okay? <laughs> yes, I am. Okay? This poor human male oh, of oh. no discernible how do you race. Know, how do you know his pronouns? I don't know. Like, Are you being his sexist? His name is man, in to man Too Nice. I think the first word in his name is man. <laughs> No, I'm just guessing. How do you know it's not he was... Manto? Look, I'm just going to say, <laughs> if their gender was female, it would be woman too nice. Oh, so not... you're, now you're saying only women can be women. Don't you mean ma'am too nice? Look, first of all, <laughs> I, see, I see what you're doing here, and you're trying to trap me, but you were the one that mentioned his race first. Because you should be proud human... of that heritage. <laughs> Look, I'm worried about this poor human male being scammed by Mr. Beast, and all you see is color. Are you showing your white privilege right now? How do you know I'm white? <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the tone of your voice. You talked about being a manager. Are you saying black people can't be managers? I'm starting to see a pattern here. <laughs> I'm just saying the system plays towards people of certain people of color. <laughs> I mean, that is a lot of money for a person of color. Yeah, I was dollars. watching Slug, when Slug was going over this, like at towards the end of this segment, before it gets to the SpongeBob movie scene, he, he the joke flies over his head. <laughs> <laughs> what the dude was pointing out about Mr. Beast. Oh god. And it's like he's like how like how could you compare this to like Ethiopian war journalism where the kids are like, <laughs> it's, like, it's the joke. It's the joke that Mr. Beast's like, look at this poor black kid I saved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Sorry, <laughs> Slugger, you were probably like dead tired at that point, but it just like went over your head. R slash whoosh. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't want to fail. I don't want to be like how everybody's saying, like, I'm going to run out of money and do all this crazy stuff. I was like, man, you please help me. And she said he was going to help me and trying to, and we was going to invest, but yeah, that didn't happen. So I actually watched this video. You know, Mr. Beast does say that they're not going to be irresponsible, that they're going to try to set Mark up for life, and that they are going to help him with investing. What we're actually going to do is be responsible and try to set Mark up for his future. So we're going to make smart purchases like a house, cars, and do some investing. But according to Mark, Mr. Beast only gave him an hour to plan what house to buy and then gave him only 24 hours to spend the bulk of his money for a video. Time. I wish I would have had more time. I mean, hell, that I million I would dollars wouldn't even better. afford like a third of that fucking Ferrari they posted. No, so. no, no. <laughs> I'm going to give you a million dollars, but I hope you have your house already picked out that you didn't think that you were going to get. Yeah. The best, best example I can give you is when uh, we had planted out the house and stuff. I literally have had an hour. He, he had somebody come to my house and we sat down and we planned all this in an hour. Yeah, they came to my house and we planned this out in, yeah, in about an hour. So I wish I would have had more time and I wish I would have did a couple things differently on the time management side, which I guess I really couldn't help because I had to spend it. I had to spend the money and I had to like do all this. So I'm starting to think he might've been a little bit That's better. I mean, seriously, it didn't have to be filmed in one day. Like if they staggered out their fucking time for recording for these kinds of videos, it wouldn't come off as scummy. No. Well, not only like, that, but... they could, they could literally have like a, a two hour plan or even like a five hour plan that could be filmed in one day and one go to have the whole thing figured out. Whenever that five hours occurred, it's like you take that out of the equation and then you, you know what... then you continue the clock afterwards. You know what really grosses me out about this? They're, they're setting him up to fail. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like you're gonna you're telling this guy that you have a one hour to spend a million dollars. So you're gonna set this guy up with a house and he's not no, gonna be able to, to pay plan. the Well, yeah, but you're not he's not gonna be able to pay the real estate tax next year because mm -hmm. he won't have that million. He's not gonna be able to he won't know how much his utilities are. He won't have anything saved up for like emergencies like if something goes wrong because you're making him spend it all. So it's not like he can sit on like twenty thousand dollars for repairs, you know. Like you're you're literally yeah. like hoping that like, you know, oh buy this house and all this good cool stuff, but oh you, that really expensive car, you're like oh your insurance is like three hundred and fifty dollars, and now you have your, you know your, tax your real estate tax and all this other shit, and then by then Mr. Beast is gone and this guy has like. A mountains of bills and no way oh, to yeah. pay it. Yeah, and then he has to sell right. and get rid of everything in order yeah. to even attempt to pay most of it. Yeah, so he loses out on everything. And then he probably loses out on, on the house he has there because he'll move into this new one. So he's fucked. I mean, yeah, that's the one thing everyone complains about when, like, this is just an aside, but Pat, you could agree with me on this, but when people, like, if you're given, like, a million dollars, would you buy a new car or a used car? It's use. like, yeah, by the you, yeah, by use because then you could fix it up and you have like a much bigger uh, data point set to know what's going to fail and when it's going to fail. Plus, you've got like all the recalls taken care of. You don't just buy a new car and then just like sail onwards into the great unknown. <laughs> so it's it's quite literally why I, like most people would like bitch about the car community is like. You're putting more into a car than what it's worth. Yeah, but it's going to be more reliable. Am I? Am I really? How is that depreciation <laughs> off the lot? Huh? <laughs> How's that interest rate? Huh? <laughs> right. Well, I mean, the only thing that I could see are like that you would want to buy the new car for is like that the experience of being able to like, oh, this is my dream car and I get to drive it off the lot and new it's just touched by me. But yeah, yeah, at that point just you're looking at it as an experience. Yeah, you're looking at it for more of a I made it moment rather than a practicality moment. Yeah, because right. this is going to be spending a million dollars in under like twenty four hours, you would want to be practical, not you know, extravagant. Exactly. But then again, it doesn't work for what Mr. Beast is trying to show off. No, and that's that's where I, I think it's kind of disgustingly negligent because you're setting him up to fail. Well, not only that, you're also setting up the kids to fail because they have that fucking, like, form thought in their head for Mr. Beast. Yep. You could sit there and actually say that he might have actually picked somebody who was more disenfranchised just because they mm -hmm. would spend more recklessly. 
Yeah. And it would be more be... better content. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what Keem was doing with Boogie. Because, <laughs> like, with me, probably 7,000 or 750,000 of that money would probably go into different investment strategies. I can pretty much do what I want off a quarter million. And then I'd live off the $750,000. I don't even give a shit. I'd sign a contract saying I won't even touch the money for fucking 10, 15 years. I, I mean, I agree. I'd be boring. What would you do? I bought a house. <laughs> I bought a used car. And I have a college fund for my kid. And I have a really, really big CD. Yeah. Should I need it? You know what I mean? Like, I would just do it. Like, if you had to legit, you couldn't have money in savings, had to spend the money, I wouldn't even do CD because technically that's savings and you can get back your initial investment. Fine, I'll do a diversified, like, uh, Roth funds and IRAs and stuff like that. Hell, you could buy properties and rent them out. Yeah. And hell, like, spending $100, like, you'd be putting it into a, like, even with, like, the leftover, if you bought, like, a reasonable home, and, like, if you kept your vehicle but just fixed it up, because they'll show, like, what condition his vehicle was in. Spend 150 like, on a home, pay the rest down, get something, like, for 200 You're going to get financed, like, instantly. Go take mm -hmm. the other 100000 between furnishing and um, a new vehicle, spend that, and then you got $50,000. Fuck, I'd take, like, a really nice fucking vacation or two and call it good. Yeah. I mean, hell. He's like because way <laughs> how he's uh, planning. He's thinking about putting money aside for expenses and other things. Yeah. I'm thinking like if you wanted to do the restoration on a vehicle that you already have, where you don't have to deal with like title and yep. like uh, taxes and everything, he could set aside a, an even bigger portion to sink into the vehicle repairs. Yeah, and it's like, look, you got a car that you know how to drive that you're familiar with. You aren't taking much risk with a newer vehicle. And you could have it fixed by, you know, relatively cheap. Yeah. I just, I, I'd be like pretty fucking boring, but at the end of it, I'd have pretty good credit and be relatively debt free and not have to work. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I'd rather that. <laughs> you mean you don't want to get completely money? screwed? No, no. Actually, that doesn't sound interesting. Can I just say, I'm super glad you won the million dollars. All I need from you is a signature right here. The vehicles are yours. What we're actually going to do is be responsible and try to set Mark up for his future. You better not read it. You're a millionaire. You get time to read <laughs> not it. Not really. The more you show us around, the more I'm like, thank God. It's the you exact the opposite million. of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, right there. Like, that's fixable. Yeah, it's a fender. <laughs> like, you could get a repl Yeah, this is the thing that went over Slug's head. <laughs> <laughs> It's like quite literally when you show the fender in that kind of condition, you're like, look at this pomo foe. He can't even fix his fender. Yeah. It's like It's like paint my ride style shit. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it just went over yeah. Slug's head for whatever reason. <laughs> oh man. Is this all the SpongeBob bit that's left? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I so, really like that meme. Um, I appreciate him doing that. I'm gonna ask <laughs> you guys. Cool. What's uh, what is Dawson's next video uh, about the secret CEO? Well, you know what's. I'm just saying, like, not the not the one that we know is out right now. What's oh, the his, third one? Yeah, what's the third video gonna have in it? Yeah, that, that's what I was saying. The secret CEO, because he says that in the second one at the beginning. He says I, that in I'm the gonna... second one. Yeah, I'm I'm saying it's gonna be about the cover up, people that covered up Tyson and Delaware and shit. Other pedophiles too, I bet. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be about, uh, Mr. Beast causing industry injuries, a crypto scam, and, uh, issues with his philanthropy. Do you know this? And are you testing us? Yes. So what was <laughs> the so what was the thing bitch. that we were supposed to pick up on that you mentioned exactly earlier? that. I'm going to show you now. Just that. Oh, okay. I got to get a good picture. Boop, boop, boop. Here we go. Look at the back wall. Contestant almost died. Crypto scams, philanthropy. He literally has the timeline oh. laid out. Okay, I see. Because <laughs> uh, I know in the second part, he's, he talks about um looking at a, a cover-up yeah. in the company, too. Yeah. So I can see that tying in with like the pedophile shit. Like, you want to know like, something funny? Like, the but... second video has that issue with the lake about the defend the yacht. I'm pretty sure that's the picture right there. Mm hmm. 
Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what I get for listening all to my shit while I play video games and I don't actually, like, stare at them. I miss these details. I just, I just thought it was funny because, like, he literally, like, Mr. Beast has people calling up trying to figure out what his next video is going to be. Like, what topics is he going to go after? Gee, I don't fucking know. Do Wait a you minute. know? <laughs> okay, you see that uh, piece of paper that's behind his hand holding the wand? Yeah. Does that look familiar at all? Yeah, no. <laughs> it looks like the report on Delaware. Oh, yeah, that could be. Huh. If we could get him in frame where he isn't covering it up. Wink, wink. <laughs> Move your hand, damn it. <laughs> nice. I'm going to give you guys a reason to keep watching. Okay, now it's fine. I don't know if that's any better. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Just Hershey's and Feastables. Yeah, I, I thought it would look like a like a fucking mug shot for a sec. Oh, <laughs> well, who's the one on the bottom there? The redhead. No idea. But yeah, trashing a beach, which trashing he talks about a little bit. The crypto scams, contestant almost died, and Mr. Beast philanthropy. Gee, I wonder what the what's going to be in the third video. <laughs> that you know look what? he's giving in this freeze frame <laughs> it's like he's seen all of our search history and he's disappointed in us <laughs> but you know what you should do yeah since you got it you should email PR at MrBeast.com for a chance to win a million dollars. You might, you crack the case, you might be lucky enough to win a million dollars and buy that challenger. Maybe Mr. Beast will just outright buy it for you. It's like, you know what, what do you want? I really like this challenger. It's yours. You saved my career. Here's your challenger. Just don't talk about pedophiles anymore. Okay. Night in the street next week by the way um mcdonald we're exposing mcdonald's and hershey's chocolate for being much worse than mr beast bar like, patrick did you get bought off no, no. <laughs> never oh. i swear to god if you do you better send some my way and Gigi's way. Oh fuck yeah! You better send some to us. I'm willing to be. I'm willing to be paid off too. But no, I just I I didn't want to like say anything. But like, if you watch the whole video, it's just a straight fucking timeline. Like he starts out literally at one end of the board, and like you can see the illegal lotteries and everything else, and like it's the same fucking board that's right here. I hate how you actually like pointed that out because now I feel, like, I feel so incompetent now like, I don't like it but yeah he, he's just moving down the board I, I don't know what could be next what possibly could come out of this did you just see a subway oh hold on I see where we're going oh fuck oh god I'm what does skipping... Mr. Beast and Subway have with co in common? <laughs> I'm skipping a lot of this video, but I'm going to point out all the shit that I said I would point out. Yes. I'm not watching this stupid skit, though. And the one thing I I discovered. Okay. <laughs> 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 Content cop from Timu back at it again. So just before I get into my interrogation with former Mr. Beast employee Jake Weddle, uh, a lot has happened since my last video. Uh, after posting, I got hundreds of messages from former Mr. Beast employees, um, and I had them all like send proof of former employment. You know, just people showing their support or telling their stories of, of you know fake videos or unsafe practices. Uh, you know, toxic workplace stuff We're like that. We're gonna go back over. Uh, some I'm not of really this. gonna get into those claims because for one, like. Most people want to stay anonymous, which I understand. I, and also, like, I think most of that stuff's just been covered with, with you know, the news coming out about these <laughs> games and everything. I, and also, I have, like, more serious allegations that I want to start covering. 
Uh, also, I heard from a very credible source that Mr. Beast has been sitting on a response to part one uh, because he was worried if he posted it, I would instantly respond with part two, you know, like a, like this is Kids Bop, Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. Uh, also, I know Mr. Beast's secret CEO has been practically like harassing my people on, you know, hey, what's in part two? What, what does he know? Um, so I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three so you don't have to harass my people. It will be about serious allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. Uh, and I'll make sure to give you full credit and, and plaster your face all over the screen when we talk about that. Uh, so yeah, I've gotten dozens of messages from former Mr. Beast employees of, of uh, very serious allegations. So I just wanna put a call to action in this, at the start of this video that you know, if you have a story, you can DM me, just uh, make sure you send uh, proof of employment first because I get a lot of DMs. Uh, and like, as much as I meme and joke around, like. I take anonymity very seriously, so without explicit permission, I don't go public with anything. And obviously, if it goes to court, I don't. I would hope they would censor your information from the court documents. I don't know. Uh, oh, and former contestants too. That's another thing I heard after posting my last video is uh, during the hundred boys versus girls video, uh, I have people corroborating the same story that the the camera guy who gave the girls a drone was making some girls feel uncomfortable. You, know, you you trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes and then, and then you try to f them. Okay, that, <laughs> <laughs> that seems really dark. No, no, I mean, it's not dark. You're misunderstanding me, bro. I'm, I'm, I think I am. Yeah, you are. <laughs> because if the girl said no, then the answer obviously is no. No. But the thing right. is, is she's not gonna say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. Anyway, so that will be part three. So, you know, uh, Mr. Beast, <laughs> do with that information what you will. I know uh, Chucky didn't want to respond to those allegations. So anyway, my interview with Jake Weddle, um, I chose to interview him because I thought he was perfect because he was both on camera and behind the scenes in 2019 and 2020. And also what people don't know is that he came back in 2021 to be the sole contestant of a Mr. Beast video, which never got uploaded because it went very badly. Uh, he also knows about another, um, portable document format who, who was working at Mr. Beast while, while actually on the registry. Uh, and, and I'll get more into that story at the end of the video. Uh, so I got his DM, drove straight to New York overnight, did not sleep, just drank a bunch of caffeine. And, and I also only had one uh, microphone in the interview, which he's wearing. So it's mostly just him talking. Also like final thing, people said my last video started slow. This video also starts slow. It, it, it you know, it builds up over time, but I'll do the retention thing and say, uh, the ending will blow your mind. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jake Weddle, everybody. I'm cool. So what did you pick out of that beginning? Everything everybody was bitching about, they decided to, even though they didn't listen to them. Um, so a couple things that stood out to me, um, I, I could go back and read the messages, but boys versus girls video uh have people... not here i know uh chucky didn't want to respond to those allegations so anyway my interview with jake weddle um i chose to interview him because i thought he was perfect because he was both on camera and behind the scenes in 2019 so this is one thing i picked up on i chose to interview him meaning he's one of several people like he said that came forward but he was probably the most visible because he can directly sit there and say, no, this guy was on camera for shows. And so he's very easy, easily able to tie this to Mr. Beast. It's not a behind the scenes person. It's someone that he can say, this lends credibility to my argument. In 2020, and also what people don't know is that he came back in 2021 to be the sole contestant of a Mr. Beast video, which never got uploaded because it went very badly. He also knows about another um, portable document format that stood out to me because he says he knows about another portable document format. Those Meaning... eyes, I feel guilty just <laughs> looking at me. <laughs> well, he was hopped up on caffeine, or as Crow would call it, meth. Meaning the the guy that he knows about is different and that he was going to report on is different from the person that Jake Weddle brings up. So there's multiple mm. PDFs. Who, who was working at Mr. Beast while, while actually on the registry. Uh, and, and I'll get more into that story at the end of the video. And that, that he is the one that's on the registry, meaning the other person is not on the registry. Video. Uh, so I got his DM, drove straight to New York overnight, did not sleep, just drank a bunch of caffeine. And, and I also only had one uh, microphone in the interview, which he's wearing. So
that tells me that this part two was not actually the intended part two. Everything you saw on the board beforehand was actually going to be part two and some of the stuff that he says in the beginning here. He got this DM, saw an opportunity with all of the shit that fucking this Jake Weddle guy peddled to him and said, this is a great way to fortify the, my, uh, my uh, story and substantiate things. I've got a guy that's been on camera with Jimmy that can sit there and tell me about stuff. And if he pitched the fucking uh, PDF file at that time, I mean, that's a fucking perfect sell. So he sits there and he's like, cool. He jumps in the car, drives from wherever the fuck he's at to North Carolina or to fr from probably North Carolina. Cause I think he says he's from there or roughly in around there to New York. He drives wherever um, straight just to interview him, which tells me again, this shit's not fucking planned. That this was a pivot? Yes. And it was supposed to be a positive pivot to substantiate the information that he has. Another thing that tells me that this was not a planned thing is what he just said. At the end of the video. Uh, so I got his DM, drove straight to New York overnight, did not sleep. Just well, another caffeine. thing. This does work to his advantage because if he just went with part two with the other stuff he was going to talk about, that's now purpose for part three. It throws a monkey wrench under the secret, you know, shadow CEO. Yes. So it's like literally a multiple fasted, you know, action he took here. Yep. Now listen to what he says right here. I also only had one uh, microphone in the interview, which he's wearing. So it's mostly just him talking. There's never going to be an interview. Was only going up there to tell a story. I mean, if I were doing an interview, I'd want two fucking microphones if I'm doing a person-person interview. He was unprepared for it. He only had one microphone. He drove overnight just to interview this guy. And I think the big thing with it is that basically he wanted to get this guy before it got out that he knew anything and Mr. Beast got to him. I think that he, uh, I think that Jake Weddle came forward to Dawson to suck off of fucking clout because he saw how successful his first video was. And he's like, fuck, I'm trying to restart my fucking YouTube channel. I bet you if I told this guy some of the shit I know, um, we could have a fucking interview. I'm going to look good. So he comes up immediately, does this fucking interview because Dawson's mine. And he's worried about fuck if fucking Mr. Beast people get to this guy. He's not going to fucking talk to me anymore. Yeah, and that works out to that. I mean, that works out better because it like shoots down the fucking ridiculous idea that he was a plant sent in by Mr. Beast. Yeah, because well, why would also, why would he send in a plant to fucking torpedo him with another pedophile? He wouldn't. I mean, and it's someone that Dawson didn't even fucking know about. Yeah, I know we talked about it, but didn't it come out somewhere that Jake Weddle and Mr. Beast did not get along. Yeah. Like they weren't like friends or anything really. Yeah. So like it would make sense that it's like I can sink him because the tide's turning against him. Yeah. But so like those are things that pointed out to me. Now like if you guys want I can go back and read some of these. Um, and I had them all like send proof of former employment. You know just people. So just watch your video. I don't know if people are accusing you or not of working at Miss or you of not working at bees but bro i feel like uh your experiences with higher ups are the same as mine and the way you mentioned specifically pitch ideas for the feastables bar is 100 percent how it was created or how it was creating pitches as a writer the whole brand is shady and company as well showing their support or telling their story uh no not about no, not about Chris. This was some producer I unfortunately can't speak too much on that, but I believe someone else uh, who reached out to you has more info on it. That's referring to the pedophile stuff. Uh, big thing I can talk about is just how much other stakeholders had their time and energy wasted. I was uh, asked to get doctors and orgs fired up about working with us only to pull the rug on them after agreeing to arrangements. It was quite uncomfortable for me. Big reason why I left, but not the biggest. There was just uh, so much malevolence and hostility within the team. They were way too slow to ax one pretty awful team leader in particular. Of, of, you know, that sounds like video. a marketing guy. Huh? That sounded like a marketing guy then. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Conkin on set of Saving 100 Dogs brought 
one of the employee's dogs off them for $10,000 in a weird power play to see if he could pay someone enough to give up their dog. Uh, instead of just adopting any of the hundreds of rescue dogs at the shelter, Tyler also forced the production to put this dog into the video uh, so he could receive free dog food and pet insurance for life, despite the fact the dog already had a home and that he is very wealthy, keeping a real rescue dog from being adopted and a new pet owner that could have used the free pet and uh, insurance from receiving it. Those are unsafe practices, uh, you know, talk. Ooh. Sorry, there's a lot to fucking read here. This is why I went back to this. Other, uh, in the world's most dangerous trap video with Mac, the reason Mac loses is that he wasn't actually the final trap built. Um, there were no other rooms, so Mac purposely took a dive at the last possible moment. Um, work conditions, it's not uncommon to see people sleeping in the office because they worked all night. Higher-ups routinely mock the idea of work-life balance. Everyone that works there is very aware of how awful the company is for one's mental health and ability to maintain relationships outside of Beast. Uh, during uh, COVID, Tyler Conklin routinely made fun of COVID regulations while actively having and transmitting COVID to multiple members of the crew. Uh, the dangerous conditions of the Amazon show are not new. Multiple contestants were sent to the hospital on the Olympics video due to the sets being built last second and not appropriately tested for safety. You know, toxic workplace. Uh, without really being able to prove the details, I can say that many of the people who receive free hearing aids in North Carolina would have gotten them for free or cheap anyways, even without Mr. Beast's intervention. Uh, also can speak to the overall malevolence and unprofessionalism of Jimmy Tyler and James Warren. Um, oh, and Jimmy being an environmentalist with his team and his trees and team C's is a joke. The dude's a massive carbon footprint. Uh, some stuff I heard about the second hand is also alarming. Some stuff about an executive after my time sexually, ex sexually assaulting someone stuff like that. Uh, I'm not really going to get into those claims because mm -hmm. for one, like most people want to stay anonymous, which I understand. I, and also like, I think most of that stuff's just been covered with, with, you know, the news coming out about beast games and everything. I, and also I have like more serious allegations that I want to start covering. Uh, also, I heard from a very credible source that Mr. Beast has been sitting on a response to part one uh, because he was worried if he posted it, I would instantly- I'm trying to remember if there's anything else to read. respond with part two, you know, like a, like this is Kids Bop, Kendrick Lamar versus Drake. Uh, also, I know Mr. Beast's secret CEO has been practically like harassing my people on, you know, hey, what's in part two? What, what does he know? Um, so I will just tell you, James, what will be in part three so you don't have to harass my people. But yeah, everything he lays out here, I think, was going to officially be part of part two. It will be about serious allegations of, of sexual misconduct uh, in the company and your direct involvement in covering up those crimes. Uh, and I'll make sure to give you full credit and, and plaster your face all over the screen when we talk about that. Uh, so yeah, I've gotten dozens of messages from former Mr. Beast employees of, of uh, very serious allegations. So I just want to put a call to action in this, at the start of this video that, you know, if you have a story, you can DM me just... Uh, make sure you send uh, proof of employment first because I get a lot of DMs. Uh, and like, as much as I meme and joke around, like I take anonymity very seriously. So without explicit permission, I don't go public with anything. And obviously if it goes to court, I don't, I would hope they would censor your information from the court documents, I don't know. Uh, oh, and former contestants too. That's another thing I heard after posting my last video is uh, during the 100 boys versus girls video, uh, I have people corroborating the same story that the, the camera guy who gave the girls a drone I know in the 100, day, or 100 boys versus girls video that they fed us boys hours after the girls each time and it really got on our nerves because it became blatantly obvious they wanted the girls to win. I know that the camera guy who gave the girls the drone was being extremely inappropriate with the girls since I started talking to one of them after the shoot. I uh, made them feel very uncomfortable. These are going to be fun to read. Did you see or hear anyone on the production staff acting inappropriately with contestants? Yes, I do. I don't remember his name, but the guy that who gave the girls the drone in the video was constantly coming into the circle and being very flirtatious with some of the girls, which was so weird given the circumstances. I remember hearing girls joking about Stockholm syndrome, but 
given how many of us were uh, sleep deprived and high on paint fumes, it honestly makes sense. Uh, I'm guessing this is just them showing proof in the other thing because the challenge video i can't read any of the fucking writing uh mr beast creative hey this is dog pack i was dm'd by another contestant that in the video uh contestant in that video that said one of the male employees on the production team was making uh some girls feel uncomfortable they told me who it was but i'm wondering if you can corroborate the story did you see or hear anything about this? I have no idea the guy's name, but someone does come to mind. Nothing particular happened to me, but I believe he was one of the cameramen. He was constantly vaping, and I remember he tested or teased slash taunted a few of the girls who were jealous of him having a vape. Uh, personally, I, avoid, I avoided most of the crew, so I can't say I experienced anything inappropriate by any of the staff. Also, great fucking video, bro. You really opened up my mind up to a lot of stuff. I was ignoring just because I got paid and saw him in such a positive light. Uh, hey, I really appreciate it. Yeah, that sounds like the guy. Was he the one that gave the girls the camera drone, right? Yes, uh, I just had to go back to the vid. But yeah, that's him, uh, if I remember correctly. Fuck, that was a lot to read. One was making some girls feel uncomfortable. You, know, you, you trap these girls in a circle and, and make them sleep on rough turf and, and get them high on paint fumes and, and then you try to f them. Okay, that, <laughs> <laughs> that seems really dark. No, no, I mean, it's not dark. You're misunderstanding me, bro. I'm, okay. I'm, I think I am. Yeah, you are. <laughs> because if the girl said no, then the answer obviously is no. No. But the thing right. is, is she's not going to say yeah. no. She would never say no because of the implication. Anyway, so... That will be part three, so, you know, uh, Mr. Beast, do with that information what you will. I know uh, Chucky didn't want to respond to those allegations. I'm not reading that. So anyway, my interview with Jake... It was basically Dog Pack just fucking messaging Chucky, saying, look, here's uh, the stuff that I've heard. Do you have any response? And nothing was said back. Weddle, um, I chose to interview him because I thought he was perfect because he was both on camera and behind the scenes in 2019 and... 20 okay. I'm going to fast forward this to the fucking sad comedian and I will play this. Um, I'm stepping away for just a moment. I'll be right back. Mr. Beast, I'm, I'm a deep cut. I'm in a few of the videos, uh, uh, sometimes maybe purposefully kept in the shadows a little bit. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the cutting room floor a lot of the time, uh, but I've, I've been in some videos. I've worked on a lot of them. Uh, I was there from 2019 to 2020, 2021-ish when I came back and did some more. I, I was there when they were authentic and then i saw the transition to what i feel like is a company he's like a tv show now it went from it went from youtuber guy with a camera to uh amazon the culture around there was very unspoken but there was a vibe there was half the people who if you made jimmy happy you were on the good half and these people got random bonuses and uh were usually moved up had more screen time uh, and then there was people who, if you had a disagreement or butt heads with Jimmy or just, he didn't like you, you know, you were the other half. And, uh, I consistently was in the half that Jimmy didn't, Jimmy didn't like me. That's fine. I don't like him either. It's okay. Uh, oh, that's just so good to say. I don't like Jimmy. I, I hate you so much. Uh, he didn't want anyone to get more popular or have more of a, a way out necessarily. Like, oh, I'm doing my Twitch thing on the side. Don't do that. Cause you could get famous and leave and talk about me negatively. Uh, and I could tell that the yes men were, you know, doing well and uh i was you know disgruntled uh for quite some time <laughs> so i've talked to reporters right like publicly and i've always had to choose my words very very carefully because i don't want to say anything i don't stand behind obviously so i used to talk to people i used to glaze jimmy publicly for things i do genuinely think are true uh but then it's like well how come you didn't talk about the working conditions well i wanted a career i didn't want to you know speak ill of youtube's golden boy and then I'm blacklisted forever. I, I, I tell people I was talking to you, they go, don't, what are you doing? You're gonna kill your career. It's like, I have to, or I'll be sad. Uh, if this is the moment, we're gonna talk about it. So uh, as far as that, uh, that's my covering up of why we didn't talk about XYZ sooner, but now you know. What, what would you say is the fakest video that you worked on while you were there? Fakest video that I worked on while I was there. This is the extent of the, the fakeness that I was involved to. This is like, <laughs> admitting to my complicity. I was a writer there and we were working on a video uh, Crushing my friend's car with a rock or meteor or uh, something. It was, it was a rock or a meteor in the title. Okay, I can't remember, but he wanted to do a prank where, unbeknownst to the person, he takes a rock, crushes their car, 
and they're supposed to think a rock came out of space. We're gonna take a meteor and we're gonna put it on Weddell's car. We're gonna take another meteor and put it on Marcus's car. Both of them have no idea that we're doing this. Weddell and Marcus are probably shocked. They had no idea. And so that was the one and only time I had to, huh, my car? What? And on the fly, I saw him, uh, cause Marcus was in that video. So Marcus is calling his mom. Marcus genuinely had no idea. He was, he was he genuinely had no idea, but. Uh, so Marcus is calling his mom and his mom's freaking out. And I'm like, oh no, they're gonna call my mom next. So I had to text my mom who had to beg to get the title very quickly. Now she, now I'm texting my mom, I go, I go, mom, I'm about to call you about the meteor thing. You have no idea? Be surprised. And then I hit send and then they go, call your mom now. <laughs> And I call my mom and I tell her, and oh, she should have got the Oscar. Oh my God, on the fly. She goes, what? I'm on vacation. Mom, my car has been um, destroyed. Wait, what? <laughs> a meteor hit it. Jacob, I'm on vacation. Do you understand? Uh, but uh, yeah, I did that video and they're supposed to give me 10K to put a down payment on a uh, new car. And they wanted me to get like a big flashy new car. 10K was supposed to be a down payment. And uh, I can't afford a big flashy new car because I work at Mr. Beast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I couldn't get anything I couldn't afford the taxes on. I couldn't get anything I couldn't afford the insurance on. Um, so I, I do my part of the video and I get a mom van that I could afford. And uh, Jimmy was like, why didn't you get a cooler car? I was like, I, what do you, I can't afford that, bro. Come on, what are you talking about? You know, if I was working on a TV show in the 90s on a show that was a quarter as successful, I could retire today. Mm -hmm. But now I make... Dog should pay, uh, making gajillionaires more money. And uh, I just walked into the writer's room. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I left, was because I just walked in there uh, and asked for, not necessarily a gajillion dollars, but maybe a salary that was more proportional to the work I was doing, given how much revenue. There's gonna be something I'm gonna point out with all of this that I want you guys to pay attention to. And that is the background noise. So just like, you don't have to worry so much about like paying attention to what he says and when he says it and everything else, but like, just pay attention to how things sound. And I'm going to point out when it sounds different and why that matters. So yeah. Like when he's stuttering, right? No, no, there's, there's a definitive point that I was like, Hmm, that just struck me as kind of Katie bugs. Like, uh, I'll put it that way. Be quiet, because I know we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> Revenue that work was doing. Uh, and then, you know, I, I talked about that, and I talked about the Writers Guild and how this is what the Writers Guild Industry Standard is for the streaming internet content with ads. I thought that was the closest thing to YouTube. And I didn't even bring up residuals, because, oh, my God, if I got residuals for every video I worked on, boy, howdy, I could retire. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, the, la the other thing I talked about was uh, there was another writer there uh, older comic. By the way, I, I it bothers me that he talks about this stuff the way he talks about it here because YouTube works off a very inverse model from regular TV and like syndicated shit and everything else. There is no residuals. Like there are videos out there that have like a million views now, but if they got those million views over 10 years, there's not much income ever been generated for the content creator on that video. It's really, it's kind of actually like within a certain set period of time, typically like in the first, like probably a couple months, that's really when all the money on the video is to be made. Beyond that, you're going to earn very fucking little off of your vid videos residually. And even with a audience as big as Mr. Beast, I am sure, I am certain after a certain point, even if it's within a year, any videos that are older than a year, he's probably not making much money at all. Even if he's pulling in millions of views because all the views have been had. So this, this guy seems very out of touch with how, how YouTube operates as a business. I will say that a uh, black guy, he had a kid and uh, I got paid more than him. And I thought that was wild because he was older than me, had a child. Uh, we're doing the exact same job. And uh, well, I'm some 20 year old fucking white guy. Why am I getting paid more than him? I brought that up. And uh, one of the things I, I didn't like about the way some of the B stuff shook out was. Oh, damn. A really good attention through all this. I feel really guilty about the way it just like shook out. Um, 
Yeah, I was talking to this other writer. Like, it's, it's fucked up, you know, that that's how the pay is. And I want you to get paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more. You know, I don't have a kid. Um, and he didn't want to rock the boat. He, did, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat. He was just, I, I like my job. I like, you know, because when you, when, you, when you grow up with, you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know. You get a little something, you don't want to lose it. So he didn't want to rock the boat. But he said, hey, man, if that's how you feel, you know, like, if that's, like, yeah, I, I trust you. I he, he stood with me. He went to that writer's, he went to that meeting with me. And I said, I said my piece, and he backed me up. And I said, I need X, Y, Z, or I'm out of here. And they said, bet. And they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if I knew, if I knew he was going to lose his job, too, I wouldn't have done it. Me, I was over the moon. I was like, you're gonna give me a, a, a check and I get to leave? <laughs> you know, I don't get to deal with the, with the you know, how many Orbeez can I fit up my asshole every day, you know? And I get to go, go home and you get, you're gonna pay me to leave. I was over the moon. And he was devastated. He did not want, I said, he, was, he just wanted to be in the room, you know? And I really, regr I really regret that. But, you know, me and him are really still tight. We're still good friends. So you're good? Yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. He's doing good. Kind of. Yeah. So maybe you'll spill it better? Honestly, best thing I could have done for him. <laughs> All right. Did you catch any of that? Or what stood out uh, to you guys? Or what stood out to you, if anything, right there? I mean, using a black person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like, that, that's the one thing everyone at Kino Casino was harping about, like, yeah. in the chat. This is calling him... Call Oh, Mr. B's base, he fired a black guy. <laughs> Shit like that. When you All pointed right. it out to me when we were talking about it, it blew me away that like you actually noticed it. <laughs> There's a couple things. So watch this from the beginning here. Rocked about. He's just, just I, I like my job. I like you know, cause when you when you when you grow up with you know nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know. You get a little something, you don't want to lose it. So you want to rock the boat. Actually, it's just before this. The exact same job. And uh, well, I'm some 20 year old fucking white guy. Why am I getting paid more than him? I brought that up. And uh, one of the things I, I didn't like about the way some of the V stuff shook out was. Oh, yeah. Jim, you want to point out what you're noticing? Because this was your pickup right here. Oh, yeah. With the way he's squeezing his nose. Like I do that, and my eyes immediately start watering. Really? Yeah. For me, it doesn't work, but you got to go into this work. and understand he's also trained theatrically. He's been trained for on camera. He's camera trained as far as like, if you go back on what everything Dawson said, likely is he's camera trained. He's probably theatrically trained somewhat. He's stage trained as far as being a comedian and he's going to know how to work a crowd gotcha. and what all that. Right. So. So basically, he's pinching the inner bridge of his nose to create pain for tears to produce, right? Yes. Yeah, that's my that's, that's my angle at it because it for me it works. It doesn't work for everyone, but but it's... if he if it does for him, yeah. And then he follows it up with a couple other things. I feel, I feel really guilty, but the way it just like shook out. Um, yeah, I was talking to this other writer. Like, it's, it's fucked up, you know that that's how the pay is and. I want you to get paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more. You know, I don't have a kid. Um, and he didn't want to rock the boat. He, did, he desperately didn't want to rock the boat. He was just, I, I like my job. I like, you know, because when you, when, you, when you grow up with, you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know. Like, if you keep looking at him. You get a little something, you don't want to lose it. At any of these pauses, so want any the of this. Now, he had one tiny, eyes. tiny tear, and he agitated the shit out of his eyes, rubbing him super so fucking hard. He's got one tiny fucking tear just below his fucking lower eyelid. He's agitating rubs his nose shit, to look red. Rubs the shit out of him. He said, hey, man, if that's how you feel, you know? Like, if that's, like, I, you know, I trust you. Um, he, he stood with me. He went to that writer's, he went to that meeting with me. And I said, I said my piece, and he backed me up. Rubs him again. I said, I need No reason for that time. And if you look at his arms and hands after all this, there's no glistening, nothing looks wet. And they said, bet, and they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if I knew, if I knew he was going to lose his job too, I wouldn't have done it. Me, I, well, I mean, here's the thing. Like, 
regardless if he's acting for like what he actually feels about it, like he probably does feel a little bit responsible for getting that guy fired because oh, he, I'm sure like broke rule number uno when it comes to the workplace, which is like don't talk about like what you get paid amongst other employees. Yeah, I mean that's an antiquated rule in my opinion, but you know, yeah. Huh. Well, that's that's what they were mostly complaining about on Kino when they were going over this, over this that night. And I kind of agree to a certain extent, but there is like, you know, equal pay laws. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you got writers, like they should be paid the writer's wage, not two different ones. I agree with them on that aspect. But yeah. then again, it's just like when it comes to seniority, it's like, I don't really buy that argument either. No. I just, I don't buy him based on how he's acting. And, like, I'm sorry, but, like, you could tell this straight face, feel bad for someone, express sorrow, express guilt, well, that's and the not thing. have it's to like force he... it to cry. What did well, crying he wants add to... to this? Well, he wanted to use it as, like, you know, to throw a wedge at fucking Mr. Beast. That's the only way I could see it, like, why he would do it. Yeah, but I could also see him feeling a bit guilty for costing that dude his job. Yeah, but he, both can be true and not need to cry. Yeah, well, I mean, in order to get people to think, "Mr. Beast, you bastard." Yeah, you know, well, well, that's kind of the angle I was looking I, at. I, I, I was standing up for my buddy, and you fired us both. There's still more though yeah. that that stands out to me. Moon, I was like, "You're gonna yeah. give me a I see a, what a you're check, talking about, and now. I get to leave." <laughs> You know, I don't get the deal with the with the. And it has to do with audio. You know, how many Orbeez can I fit up my asshole every day? You know, like he's portraying and he's pretty upset here, right? Mm -hmm. Like you would you would say at least he's portraying that. And I get to go go home and you get you're gonna pay me to leave. I was over the moon, and he was devastated. He did not want. I said he was he just wanted to be in the room, you know. And I really regret, I really regret that. But you know, me and him are really still tight. We're still good friends. So you doing good. Yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. He's doing good. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you'll spill it better? Honestly, best... Okay, did you notice it there? Mm, I'm going to go back 10 seconds. Really listen to the room noises. Like, just the ambiance of the room. Really still tight. We're still good friends. Does it go up in volume? Yeah, he's doing yes. good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. He's doing good. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you'll spill it better? Honestly... Right there. Yeah. So there's only mm. one mic. He's wearing the mic. In order for Dawson to be heard here, okay. doing good. he has to speak Kinda. louder. Yeah. So and he compensates with that by turning the gain up a lot. So you hear the room ambience jump way the fuck up. You know you don't hear jump okay, up? So... You don't hear him breathing oh. harder and upset in his chest, which is where the mic would be. And you're not hearing anything. Yeah, yeah, I he's mean, doing good. he's, he's listen, doing good guy. I love that guy. Uh, he's doing good. He's sniffling. Kinda, yeah. So maybe you'll spill it better. Honestly, totally fine. And it's one uncut chunk of audio. The video cuts back and forth, but it's one uncut chunk of audio. Mm -hmm. And the and the reason you could tell is there's kind of like a, a there's kind of like a rhythm to that hum, and like it would be hard to cut that audio and not hear it jump slightly well i really can't hear the hum but yeah, i can see what you're talking about the game because i don't see why he would yell honestly like that yeah yeah but he talks about it, it sounds, in the beginning of the makes video it sound like he's, he's unhinged like, he only has one one mic and he's wearing it and he says that right before the interview he's doing good yeah. I mean, if they got a Somebody table why not better? just have like one table mic i i don't know why he didn't do that i think it's that he has a lapel mic or something like that and I'm guessing you just can't likely. see it because when you look uh, at Dawson, when he's doing his videos where he sat down, it looks like he's wearing a lapel mic. If you look. Yeah. Honestly, best thing I could have done for him. <laughs> now that he's a very, very far removed. And now if you looked at him here, he doesn't look much different than he did here. He looks red cause he's rubbed the shit out of his eyes, but. And his nose. Does he look like a dude that's been crying his eyes out as much as like he looked like he was? Like there's there's Not no really. hyperventilating, ventilized, uh, breathing anything. Whatever he has to do to achieve that goal, he'll do. And I think it was the smartest decision for him 
that he calculated. I think this guy fleeced the shit out of Dawson. And I think he did this the whole way through. And I think Dawson's inexperienced enough that he didn't know he was getting fleeced by somebody who knew how to make themselves tear up and cry and look emotional and everything else. So basically you're accusing him of being a boogie with Mike Klum yet again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dawson's Mike Klum. Gotcha. Yeah. Because if you said that, I would have picked up on it instantly because I don't know the Katie Bugs person that well. Yeah, Katie Bugs was the one that did the whole fucking thing with George not found, and she cried so hard, and that's how all the people believed that she was sexually assaulted in the middle of this party by being cuddled <laughs> without consent. Honestly, I didn't pay attention to the George not found shit. <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, a hug. Hey, <laughs> how dare you? Oh my god. The implications of cuddling. I donate to charity, people can't say I'm shitty. If I donate to, if I give this homeless guy 10K, what do you mean I'm a bad guy? But I've always thought, if you're going to do something nice for somebody, and you stick a camera in their face while you do it. There's just something like, once you realize and think about the fact that he's maybe faking a lot of this, there's so much that comes off snake oil salesman-like about this guy for the rest of this interview. Eh. It, you didn't do a nice thing. I don't know, it comes and goes with what he's talking about. From now that I've got that, and I'm trying to remember like different parts of it. Yeah, and I I think it comes and goes because I mean there are certain things I don't think he would want to be the snake oil salesman to talk about. And if he's doing this as an act, and he's got this pl pre plan to a point where he's fleecing Dawson here, he would know when to put on the theatrics and when to take him away. In order for a certain statement like um, his injuries from that, yeah, yeah, the uh, from that the like thirty day challenge, the psychological damage, the shit with the paycheck yeah, the, here, he like he he knows he knows enough, and it's just, yeah, because I don't think he me. would put up the because I I couldn't tell like from what I remember, it's like I can't tell if he actually did any of those theatrics when he said, uh, yeah, my father is a convicted pedophile, you know, he did he did do some of it, he did, yeah. Okay, then I'll yeah, have to rewatch it. Because he talks about Jimmy, he, he made fun of my dad, and, you know, my friends do that, but Jimmy wasn't my friend. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he was my boss. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much that comes off. And it's not necessarily that, like, he's being emotional. It's that he knows when to use the emotions for uh, substantiating his story. You know, that makes him more of a D-Max now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think about it. He's more of a D Max than what I gave him credit for. <laughs> you gained some. Or an echo you, of tragedy because a they share that trait. The street and you saw an opportunity for yourself and your image, and you gave one guy ten thousand dollars who needed it to eat, and now the revenue you get. By the way, since we're gonna watch this, I want to point out the other thing really quick since we have him on the screen. Um, so he puts out this video and there's uh, just a couple things in here. I want to point out really quick. Um, first is that he is going to do the same performative stuff in this video. And we think that he may have, there we go here. Just watch this friend of mine, like a lifelong friend of mine. And, uh, you can see on the date that it says 2020 cause that's when I was officially no longer an employee. And he got me that because I, even though he worked in 2020, I was supposed to start my own thing. I was supposed to go ahead and do my own stuff. And he's one of those guys that's like really like don't not into the feminine frou frou stuff, which is fine. You know, we get along. It's funny. So when he gave it to me, he, he was he, he said, he said, this isn't a gift. This is not a gift. It's an investment. I said, then why is it wrapped like that? Silly goose. You can look back at my old videos and it was up and I haven't had it up in a while, but. It's up now. I'm going to work through the rain if that's okay. Did you notice it with this? Yeah. There's two jump cuts and suddenly his eyes are wetter from there to there. There's it, there, his eyes are noticeably wetter. It's well, up now. I mean, ready? It's raining outside. I'm gonna jump so cut. Might as well rain inside. Well, jump cut and his eyes look fine. Work through the rain if that's okay. Uh, some Another jump cut. Now he looks like he's been crying.
Like, I think he fucking put eye drops or something in his eyes, and there's no way you can dissuade me because there's a fucking jump cut. <laughs> uh, it depends on how hard you press into your eye. You can make him water. Yeah, but, like, still he jump cut. So, like, no matter what, I think he's faking it. But Well, it... I don't think he jump cut too much, like, to where he could put, like, eye drops in because I, I think he just, like, jump cut like for like good five seconds he rubbed into his eye until he caused yeah, some pain. I mean he could have done that yeah absolutely because I mean and the stance he's taking if he went to go get eye drops he wouldn't be like in the same position that he was and just to drive you know? home like the jump cuts with this guy before this maybe gets Watch taken this. down I hope it doesn't I'm choosing my words very carefully as I have for the past five years uh before we really get one get started uh I just want to go ahead and say that uh in the Top link in the description. Uh, I have a link uh, to a fundraiser to help fight against child sex trafficking. Schmafficking. I hate the internet. Uh, the reason Two. I'm choosing uh, this uh, fundraiser is because just... I think there was a third one. There. Fully coincidentally, I got to do this show. It was a benefit. We'll call that three. Show to prevent child sex trafficking. And the show was... Four. Was on the 30th. Uh, funny enough... Five. 25 seconds in, five jump cuts. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, I mean, he did, like, the whole child sex trafficking, whatever, the fucking tongue twister, so maybe he was a bit tongue-tied and he edited him out. But five like, fucking oh, jump a... cuts in 20, 27 seconds? Mm, Jesus Christ, maybe. that's a lot. And this is a video that he's urging, he's putting out quickly, because he's trying to put this out around the same time that Dawson's video is coming out, because Dawson's video it mentions at the end, hey, go to this guy's channel, there's a, a more uncut version of the fucking interview. There isn't a more also, uncut version of the interview, and absolutely nothing of any value is added through this entire fucking video. Also, this kind of throws out like, oh, we only had one mic out of, you know, <laughs> yeah, out I, question because yeah. he had his own mic. He could have brought his own. Yes, yes. Okay, so this dude's a complete and utter scam artist. Yes. He was booked on that show like a month ago before any of this came out. And I mean, I know hell, like, I've even said, like, even if they are a jilted employee, it still doesn't take away from, like, the, the, the fact that, that what they say is true to a certain extent. Yeah. It's just that you have to look past the prima donna bullshit. Yeah, and I think the other thing I was going to show is right in here. Yeah. So this is the only thing of value in this whole video. I'm going to sum, what, a 23-minute video up? This is the only thing worthwhile in this whole thing. I called my buddy. Let's say his name is Mark. I called him because he lives there, and he's connected with the law enforcement and the, the lawyers and the legal stuff, you know? I thought, who else do I call? So I called him back after I talked to the lawyers who I didn't need, and I was like, oh, my God, that lawyer is so nice. She's so great. Thank you for sending me her way. She is fantastic. And then my buddy Mark, Mark, my friend Mark, his name is Mark, he goes, hey, man, just a heads up. Uh, I know a lot of the... Uh, Law enforcement in Greenville, because I used to live over there, and apparently a lot of them are working right now for one guy, company, entity. A lot of them are on the same dime, working overtime for one, for one thing, whatever that may be. And I was like, huh, say that again. That's wild. I didn't think anything of that. I thought, hmm, that's a little extra. Anyway, I don't know if that corroborates anything that somebody else, you know, has been posting, because they allegedly have, you know, insider information from allegedly, you know, the inside of some alleged entity. Can you can tell I, I talked to lawyers? This video is about that whole thing. Basically, he's referring to Jimmy's post talking about there's a investigation going on, the external investigation. He hired uh, private investigators who are basically police force to on on private time to then come in and investigate this. So it's not the police looking into it per se that kind of strikes me as a bit odd and a bit fishy because there's not it i don't think there's going to be a whole lot of convincing to say can you guys wait i'm pr bringing this up up on charges and stuff because they're doing it on their own dime on their own time not as police officers during police hours well i, I kind of have something that could corroborate it's a story like when i was a kid uh, when my parents were building like a new house, yeah. the current one that uh, they live in right now, actually, when we were getting the the house built, we had like the frame already done. It was just getting the electrical put in. Yep. And some of the people who were doing the electrical work were police officers who did construction and whatnot. 
And the whole time that they were doing the electrical work, they were scoping out our neighbor's house because our neighbor had a cousin who lived with him who ran a fucking meth lab back in the woods. And they were there doing dual purpose. One, installing the electrical shit in the house. Yeah. And two, scoping out, like, you know, the people that they've been investigating. Yeah. Like a low-key so stakeout. Yeah, yeah low-key stakeout. And they had good vantage because it's a two-story house. You could see quite a while through the... Or, through, quite a ways, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, quite a ways across the cornfields into the, into the tree line. And they were doing that the entire time. So I could see this happening on private time. It isn't unheard of. Yeah. I just, I, I, it wouldn't be unheard of or crazy to me to have Mr. Beast, who's sitting there writing them a paycheck privately, say, look, I know you guys have to report this. Can you wait a little bit to report it just so that mm-hmm. I can get my stuff in alignment? Yeah. I mean, and again, these would have to be police detectives, not police officers. Well, people the, who yeah, are a police officer like, can even go get his private investigator's license. Well, yeah, but I mean, again, it's like if you're going to hire them, they'd have to already be qualified as PIs yeah. within the police force. Yeah, and but I'm just saying, like they could have done that. Just like uh, Jim and I were talking, like the town I grew up in was a very college town in that respect that there was two colleges in town, and so a lot of the police force would work as bouncers at the bars, especially you know during times where in college was in session because they could pick up extra cash. Mm-hmm. But like, as they were working security, they were not police officers for anything that happened. They would still have to call the police. They couldn't just arrest somebody because they're police yeah. officers. So like it applies in that respect of like, they could find stuff out, bring it to Jimmy, be like, these are crimes. We're going to report them. And Jimmy can sit there and say, like, look, can you just wait on reporting him? Not asking him to not report him, but just saying, can you give me a little bit of time? And I don't know. I, I see enough corruptibility. I mean, with he, he really can't do that. He really can't do that. Yeah. Who's to say he can't if he's hiring them privately? Well, no, because that would be an ethical breach within the police department. Those cops yeah. would basically lose their they, jobs. They would have to like... report it. But it doesn't say when. He's not saying don't report it. He's saying just give me a little bit of well, time. No, like no, he, like just e- no, just even putting like a damper, like you know, a hold on when to make a report. Like there is a finite amount of time for like when a case can be made, and you know, statute of limitations and whatnot. Like oh at yeah, times a factor in everything. So if he's paying them to investigate, he isn't paying them to wait to file the report of what they found back at HQ. Like there's like, if you're a dirty cop, you'd probably do it. But I just, uh, how easily can you also then take information if they've signed contracts and turn that information over to the police? They would have to start an investigation from nothing. mm -hmm. So I'm sure that his legal team, especially when you watch uh, legal Eagles video, he talks about their legal teams, complete assholes. Like they're, they're complete fucking assholes. And so like, I could totally see it written into like a contract with them of like, whatever you find, you know, is, is our information. So then the police would have to technically start an investigation from scratch. Cause I don't know if they would be able to use any of the information that they found as private investigators on their own time towards a police investigation. Well, then that becomes like a conflict of interest because then they would have the information. They would have to be withdrawn from the case, which would severely limit police, uh, you know, or not utilities, but uh, resources. Oh, yeah. But I think Jimmy purposely did that. Well, I I don't know if you could legally do that, even with a contract. It'd be kind of like a bullshit NDA where uh, people are trying to cover up like crimes through an NDA by hushing people up. Like, you know. I don't know. I, I, think I, I think it just falls into a legal gray area that I could easily see Jimmy using to his advantage. Given everything. Mm. The dude brought a pedophile to meet his mother. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this guy's not ethically above board. <laughs> from that video is way more than what you gave. I think when he's generous on camera, it's the least authentic thing in the world. There, there, there's an element of, you know, Oh, hey, you're crying. That's so good for camera. You know, I'm so glad he's 
If you're crying because you're so thankful that you got XYZ, and then you go, oh, that's so, I'm so glad he needed it that bad so I could come in and, oh, can you, can you cry more? Oh, it's so good for the camera if you could, oh, I just did. It made me uncomfortable that I was working there and I didn't like it and I vocalized it sometimes. And I think that's why I wasn't on camera as much as they said I was going to be. Uh, I was told at one point that I was going to be like fourth banana, you know, it was going to be Jimmy, Chris, Chandler, me, you know, and then that never happened. And I remember talking about that, like, hey, I thought my contract said XYZ. Uh, and then I got the severance checks. So, you know, whatever, how that resort. So after your severance checks, how was your relationship with the company? I know you appeared in videos after that, right? Right. So, so in videos where I was uh, appearing in later, that, that's why you keep nice publicly. If, you, if you're nice in public, hey, Jake was nice in public. Let's have him back for something. You know, yeah, sure. So I, I was... By the way, you can kind of notice back and forth here, the talk or what I was talking about with the... There's that kind of like white noise hum going on in the background. If you listen here. Severance checks. So, you know, whatever. How that resort. So after your severance checks, how was your relationship with the company? I know you appeared in videos after that, right? Right. So, so. In There's jumps in the volume of the, of the hum in the background. And like, you can hear the audio being cut. It's not a consistent, huh? It, there's like a choppiness to it with the cut between After your severance checks, how was your relationship here? with the company? I know you appeared in videos after that, right? right. Probably so, an ace so there. Unit. Yeah, whatever it is, you just you can audibly hear a jump cut. So that lends credence to when he's talking with him on the other one, it is one fluid cut in audio. Videos where I was uh, appearing in later, that, that's why you keep nice publicly. If, you, if you're nice in public, hey, Jake was nice in public. Let's have him back for something. You know, yeah, sure. So I was, I was hoping they'd call back, you know? And uh, I appeared in some videos after I left. I think one of them was a, a, a three days at a maximum security prison. Uh, if I did do many challenges in that, I got paid. I was, you know, clocked in with a, with a rate and I would get paid and compensated for those. Uh, but there was one video I was in, I got, I got paid a lot for it, but it didn't, uh, it, it didn't come out. Uh, it, it, didn't, it didn't come out because it didn't go well. There, there was a video. I mean, right um, there, you can see the lapel, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's just right below the logo on the shirt. Yep. And so that's where I think he's boosting the gain so that you can hear a pickup. I think he was having dual channel audio too, because also during that point, you notice there's a little bit of a skew with the audio that when Dawson speaks. And I think that's just also from inexperience and stuff. Yeah. That came out probably like a year ago, something like that. It was, it was the, uh, it got a lot of hot water when it came out. It was the, uh, the like surviving like a uh, $10,000 every day you start in solitary or surviving solitary for whatever. It was, it was one of those solitary confinement videos that got a lot of media attention because everybody saw the premise and thought, what? You shouldn't do that. And if people don't know, that was the second attempt. Uh, the, the first attempt was on me. And it, uh, it didn't go well. I, I, was already, I was already planning on uh, moving to New York. And I had worked at a couple of YouTube companies after Beast. And I had a little bit of change in my pocket. You know, the most change I had in my pocket ever, you know? Small potatoes. Yeah, you know, compared to beast bullshit, but you know, I thought I had enough to to move to New York or whatever. And uh, I, I get a call uh, from somebody over there, and they go, "Hey, they want you for a video." By the way, I do want to point out before we get into this whole story, I don't think Mr. Beast committed war crimes, partially because he's not a country, and he's not at war with anybody. So I don't think he can really <laughs> violate the Geneva Convention. But <laughs> hey, technically he's, at war he's at war with the algorithm. <laughs> but like just to just to like put some actual credence behind this, I think this story, if you took it and read through it with the understanding of the way I think Dawson wants you to see it is that this was somebody according to Jake. Now, how much you want to trust Jake or not, according to Jake. He was supposed to be the number four person. He's the fourth fucking Beatle, right? He's going to be fucking Ringo Starr. And he was put through this and Jimmy was willing to do things to psychologically damage him. And if he's willing to do that to somebody who's going to be the Ringo Starr, then who else is he willing to harm <laughs> in, you know, bad ways? 
I'm be sorry, fair, Pat. Ringo Starr wasn't even the best drummer in the Beatles. <laughs> He's not exactly uh, the sorry, best Pat, comedian. But <laughs> when you compared him to Ringo Starr and he's a writer, the only thing I could think of was that Family Guy clip where Ringo writes a song and they just put it up on the fridge. It's like, yeah. you know what? We're just going to put this right here, right on the fridge. All right. <laughs> You, you pick the worst. I wouldn't even say it's cool and unusual punishment, Huggy. By the way, like it's not. It's not the fact of like all the stuff. It's more the fact of like if Mr. Beast is willing to do this to one of the boys, what is he willing to put people who aren't one of the boys through? Like I think if you look at it through that lens and that context, it changes the story a bit. I mean, it is cruel. You called him Ringo. <laughs> I mean, now it's cruel to Ringo. I mean, they treated him like Ringo. <laughs> uh, to be fair, Ringo sucks. <laughs> well, look, Ringo wasn't the one who married Yoko Ono, so he gets passed. There's, there's worse people in that band. <laughs> I, you know what? I will trade Ringo Starr for George Harrison any day. Okay, <laughs> George Harrison. George Harrison was the best Beatle. Oh man, I... fight me! I don't know because none of the other Beatles were as good as George Harrison on their own. The only reason John Lennon was as good was because he worked so well with McCartney, and vice versa. Jo- well, George Harrison was the strongest Beatle on his own. Yeah, he was probably Actually, the strongest I, I, solo. Yeah, I'll I'll take you up on that offer. I think the guy who replaced Paul was the best Beatle. <laughs> the the, the uh, look-alike yeah the look-alike <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about that but he was the best Paul he convinced a lot of people that Paul didn't die wink, wink. I mean, he, was the, he was the best Paul I'll give you that but I still don't think he's better than my George, George Harrison because that was in my opinion he was the best you know I think Lennon was a good songwriter he had thought-provoking songs. I, I wouldn't he say was, he was even the best singer. I think he was a good songwriter. He was I mean, he okay. He was a horrible politician. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what he was he really good at deserved. doing? Dying. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, dude. wow. I can't believe Russia decided to pick a one. Right? <laughs> Well, that was the first attempt to bring down America. Then they tra- then they had to go to Mr. Beast. They bided their time and waited for like, you know, two decades or whatever. Oh my god! <laughs> we were able to work it in. Wait, I just I just did the math. Two decades would have been two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about shit that happened. 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I keep like looking at myself and realizing, holy fuck, what has my life become because I'm so old? Like, I, I, I keep forgetting I'm as old as I am and I don't like it. Like, <laughs> amazing, great, cool, thank God. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 what was the video? And they tell me the, print, the pitch. They, 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 they try to make the pitch sound like it's going to be like a walk in the park. Uh, the pitch is a uh, hundred days in solitary confinement, uh, but don't worry. Like you only have to last like thirty. We have like a video. They're pitching it like a oh, it's, at first it's gonna be like a luxury vacation. You're gonna have like a hot tub and an ice cream machine, and like part of the video is gonna be you deciding like what 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 items am I gonna get rid of you know today? And it's like the choice. They were like, uh, it's only gonna be bad for the last like five days tops when you have like nothing left. You're the first. It's gonna be like a breeze for most of it, and uh, by the end of it. See, like, this stuff, like, I can, I can touch on and say, like, yeah, this was probably, like, there's parts of this that are psychologically torturous, but, like, it's not. I, it's not full on, like, solitary confinement. No. Like, you're this not is in not a six-by-eight yeah. white cell with, like, a concrete bed and a pillow. Yeah. Like, this is, this is not even, like, fucking, this is not Gitmo. They weren't blasting music the entire time, but uh it's it's messed up i mean they did like you know the sleep disruption uh no clocks no light or lights on all the time like that shit's gonna fuck with you because then you have no perception of time so it's gonna really fuck with you mentally that way i have a theory yeah 
What if the sleep disruptions where they just let Chris Tyson like crawl in his bed and molest him? Oh, he was too old. Yeah, but no, could you just think of because like Chris Tyson went for older people too. It wasn't just kids. He was an equal opportunity sex pest. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I could understand like thinking about it like the smell of a chlorine filled hot tub mixing with sour milk. And, like, the loud cacatony of the fucking machine and stuff like that just going. Or even when it's not going, like, you still are going to have the probable buzzing of the lights because I'm guessing this was out in a warehouse, so it's going to be all incandescent, like, fluorescent I mean, lighting and shit. Like, there's probably a lot of shit, like, when you're sitting there in silence. A cost. I mean, you. just think, think of it like this. It was, like, their miniature version of Waco without, like, the fire. <laughs> I mean, we don't know. There might have been fire. We don't know. We we weren't there. There could have been fire too. And then, like the having him run a marathon, like totally, like without like having a prep up or it or anything, like yeah, out of a dead sleep, yeah, that's kind of fucked up. And I mean, you know what? The monkey danced, so part of that's on him. This is what Keemstar should make Boogie do. This is the type of shit. I can mean, think imagine, about it. Like, it lines up with the Star... Waco comparison. Like imagine... they had ice cream parties. He's got an ice cream machine. They got a hot. He's got a hot tub. They had a pool. He's got like a theater system. They had an in-home theater. Like all they were missing was some weirdy like with glasses and long hair preaching to him. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just uh, I'm totally thrown off now. I think with Boogie, like, if you did this to him, he'd probably come out normal. I mean, well, there we go. Then we fix him. Oh, no. I don't I, see I'd the still downside. I still, I still would hope that he drowns in his own bodily fluids. Yeah, we'll see. But at that point, then he might do it himself. You know, like, and he might seek redemption, right? So it's like, we either fix Boogie or we torture him and get content. It, I feel like that's a win-win, like, across the board. Psych, uh, that's something we kind of touched on earlier, by the way. I think that there is a very strong possibility that this is beyond, like, a cancellation. Like, he could lose his channel in a couple ways we discussed, like, when we, before we even got into all these videos. But, like, he could, he could end up potentially going down as the guy that could, and I'm not saying it's a sh for sure thing, could, like, be the guy that destroyed YouTube with what he's doing now because there's implications here beyond even the apocalypses and everything else like this is stuff where like no matter what youtube does they're going to have to come up with policies for the outraged public that's going to come out with this and be like so what are you doing to protect kids and yeah. that stuff that even changes in revenue will not will not affect and like so they're gonna have to eventually probably make policy changes and platform wide changes and what that's gonna look like and how that's gonna affect other people. I kind of would prefer Mr. Beast fall on a sword and fucking take one for the team, considering his team has taken so many children that is. Yeah. Allegedly. I mean is it really allegedly if one of them actually has a criminal record? I mean, honestly, he shouldn't fall on his sword. He should just be bayoneted. bayoneted. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, that works. Yeah. I, I could go for a Mr. Beast kebab. Now I'd Beast Burger Beast Why wasn't that on the <laughs> fucking menu? <laughs> the Beast Kebab. <laughs> the Beast Kebab. <laughs> oh, man. Tastes like shame. <laughs> After 30 days, you're going to get... Three hundred thousand dollars, because it's ten thousand dollars. By the way, tastes like shame. I feel like it's every meal that this guy makes. That was a day. No, I just think that's and a life. <laughs> oh, man, I grew up poor in North Carolina. I said, burr, 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 "Excuse me, you, I'll yell dance for you if you put that kind of money in my face." Sure. They were like, "You're gonna be locked in this room, and we gotta make sure you're on all the time. We're gonna have cameras on you all the time, and you're perfect for this because you never shut the fuck up." Uh, yeah, on, on paper, I was like, okay, I can do this. And, and I was, they always, they always cut me out of the videos. They always, because, and I was, you know, editors have told me that, uh, that statement right there makes me think that he's also not a Mr. Beat plant because they always cut me out of the videos. I wanted to be the star for once, which also feeds, I think, credence into the whole fact that like, he's doing this to suck clout off of Dawson. And I bet you like, if I really wanted to, I could probably go to, 
uh, Weddell's channel here, look at his past videos, and hmm, 19,000 views, 46,000 views, 3.3,000, 3.323, uh, 25,000 views. That's a pretty good one. Rest of them aren't even breaking 5,000, let alone 10,000. Oh, that was a good one. Why I would, oh, Mr. Beast. Hmm. Wonder why that one did well. All the rest of these, not even barely breaking 5,000, sometimes not even breaking 2,000. These two videos, 1.1 million views and 333,000 views. Yeah. He's, I, I feel like he's going to be like an Aaron M. Holt now yeah like you know if, I mean? if we there's sort, always one in every crowd if we sort his most popular videos all of them have to do with mr beast everything yeah. else he's got uh mr beast mr beast mr beast these are all mr beast and like here this is his most popular video not having anything to do with mr beast and it's twenty five thousand. everything else is a downhill from there and it's not like this is a new channel He's been going at this for a little bit. It's clock suck. Plain as day. God, this sounds like so much like M. Holte. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the Ricada situation happened, milk it for everything he's worth. Yeah. Like, you know, it's YouTuber just, trying for a decade to break out, not getting anywhere. It's just the bad thing is, is that Dawson got fleeced in this and it detracted a bit from his fucking, his value. And what he was putting forward, which was really good. Dawson, I mean, you could sit there and say, yeah, he's a little bit of a clout suck. He saw a guy who worked with Mr. Beast coming out, and like, and he could put him on camera and point to videos where this guy was in. So I think that's maybe what fleeced fucking uh, Dawson a bit. But in the grand scheme of things, I don't think even what happened here is that crazy on Dawson's side. But I think what he did is fucking shameful. Uh, it's because you have too much of a personality. And so with this video, I thought... This is perfect. It's a video they can't cut me out of. I'm the guy. And so I thought, well, if I have to do this, if I have to do solitary confinement in order to do the things I want to do, then I will do that. That I held my tongue and I swallowed my pride and I tried to do one, one, one last ride. Uh, and uh, I get there and at first it's fine. And uh, I mean, they, they had just freshly painted the set. You could smell it, you know? Which that's probably not good, you know, the smell of fresh paint in your surroundings for the next XYZ time. Uh, it looked good. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, he bitches about fucking paint here, but then he's going to go on to bitch about the smell of fucking a stale hot tub and fucking sour milk. I think that would be slightly more offensive. I wouldn't be worried about bitching about fresh paint smell. Yeah, and the thing that, like, really stands out to me, like, he's he feels very performative. Yeah. I mean, he's... even now, like... He's he's concentrating on so many itty bitty details that he's glossed. It's like almost losing the meat and potatoes of the story. Well, it's kind of like what they say about like, you know, like liars and shit, right? Like the more detail, the more suspect the story is because the more details you throw in, it's like that sort of like you're appeal trying to convince to authority. Somebody, yeah. But like, yeah. Like yeah. you're like, Oh, well I was there. Look at all the, this information gives me authority. Yeah. So like you can tell I was there, you know, so it's, it kind of rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. As I, I don't know. Good on the visual, like the key looks good on camera. You know, it's movie magic bullshit. It was a terrible facility. I mean, he was in one of the studios. The, they had to like get like a separate like tank for, you know, septic stuff. Uh, yeah, there was a hot tub in it. Yeah, there was an ice cream machine. Like, things look were... God damn it, this thing. How are we loading on a downloaded video? <laughs> it's the Russian. Do, like, so I got to choose which sense was assaulted at a time. I, I couldn't have all of them good. Uh, so the, the little things started to build up. You know, there was like a, 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 the bug thing wasn't like terrible, but it was a factor. And like at first it was fine, you know, and you're, you're, you're playing it up. Like, cause you know, it's a video. And it got to a point where like, they weren't, they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, can we like have like nighttime hours, you know? By the way, I think that cut that Dawson left in there was just the fact that he felt like he was just showing Jake so much. It's like, is this guy even still in the room? And so I think he put that in there just to like, yeah, no, I was still there. <laughs> right. I, sort of I give just, credence that it's more of an interview rather than just letting him ramble. Yeah. 
But I mean, and for all intents and purposes, it's exactly what he's doing. He only has one mic. I mean, you walked into this situation, one mic, when this guy couldn't have possibly brought another one. Yeah. It'd be yeah, a shame if he brought the one he was just using. Yeah, for his video, yeah. Sure, surely would be a shame. You know, he's he's a traveling comedian, and he just can't be bothered to find a mic that would work. Like... In his own house. Outside of... Dawson went to. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if this is at his house. I'm assuming this might be, like, a location somewhere. Outside of the home. Because, like, it looks like it, or maybe... I don't know. Well, would that be, like... Would that be, like, maybe a room that he would record in? Like, an office? Could be. It's just... I don't know. Like, I I just feel like... he He's just getting fleeced left and right on this. No. Because it would fuck up the... T it sounds unfurnished. There's a lot of echo in this room. So it's like, almost like a bathroom echo. Like, there's not much in here. It's, you're getting a lot of sound reverberation and everything else. So, like, I don't know. I don't think this is anything... I don't think this is anything that they had control environmentally over, which would put it out of, uh, out of Jake's hands and out of Dawson's hands. Yeah. Time He's lap. a comedian. Maybe they borrowed a com like a local comedy club. Yeah, I mean it could be something like that. Shots. The time lapse of what? Me sleeping or me not sleeping? Yeah, I saw in other videos they did a uh, like, oh, you're gonna get X Y Z hours of sunlight. Oh, great! Why well, don't know how they figured that one out? I didn't have it. <laughs> you know, I did, one of the things was you got to take away your clock, so you didn't know what time it was. Okay, I got no access to sun. I got no access to clock. I don't know, like. The, the, the lights are on me all the time. I wasn't sleeping. I, I could not sleep. And I, I have insomnia problems now. Um, it, but I, I, they might have started there. I had good people looking out for me. <sighs> I had a lot of good people looking out for me saying, this, this, we got to stop. So I, I, um, I just wanted to turn the lights off. And I'm, I'm vocalizing to people. I wish the lights would turn off. And I go up to my friend, my, 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 my good friend. And I go, I, go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. Yeah, see, we're talking about the Geneva Convention here. And unfortunately, Mr. Beast doesn't fit the definition of country, nor has he signed the Geneva Convention, become a member of the United Nations, um, or is at war with anybody. Well, the issue is he probably <laughs> signed a contract that allowed Mr. Beast to do that, like, yeah. a, like a waiver. Like yeah. He probably signed that waiver not thinking what it entailed because he finally got his chance on camera. Yeah, so like... I... That and uh, it, it's probably like the fucking Titan submersible, Titan submersible kind of contract too. Yeah. With that. yeah, yeah. I guarantee you with his lawyers that's probably airtight that outside of like Mr. Beast literally walking up and stabbing him that like anything that happens there like he's taking on that risk yeah i mean hell that fucking hot tub like i mean this is kind of a stretch but i mean it's reeks of chlorine like biological warfare and chemical warfare yeah i, I the, that's the thing it's like you can get you can get going like like i said you can sit there and say that it's almost like a gitmo where they were doing like the the light and the loud music and everything else and uh uh, deprivations and all things like sleep deprivation and all that. So yeah, I mean now you're now you're comparing Mr. Beast to Gitmo. <laughs> yeah, the, the only issue with Gitmo though is like that they're prisoners. They're there of their not of their own accord. Yeah. Whereas like you signed up for it. Like, He's getting ten thousand dollars a day. Well, yeah, you're. It's voluntary. You can say I'm done and walk away. It, Gitmo can't. Yeah. They can't. Like they can't just say I'm done being a. I'm done being criminal. I want to go back to my terrorist now. Well, and like, like here's the thing that like kind of frustrated me, and Kino did point out this, and it's like, okay, so like if you're having trouble in the first day or so, figure out the first couple things that like would go, like the ice cream machine would probably have gone on the first day if it was that fucking bad at noise. Like, yeah. fucking get it out of there. If the noise is really that bad, let it go. Because remember, every day they're taking stuff out of that room, too, still. Well, they probably argued with them, and then, like, I mean, as far as, like, decisions, they had to bargain. Yeah, maybe, but, like, I still would be like, look, if you guys want me to continue this and you want your fucking content, the ice cream machine's gotta go. Yeah, like you guys... Yeah, but they'll use the contract and everything and treat it as a joke, like, what? That's a war crime. 
Yeah. You know? Well, then you leave. Then, like, yeah. And you've made $10,000. Like... He's still got to pay you, too, by the contract. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I, I just... There's parts of this that, like... Okay, a lot of people moralized when it came to the Jake the Viking thing of, like, how would you... Uh, or why would you take a plea deal for this? Nobody would ever play, take a plea deal for something they're not guilty of. Like, I saw Chud moralizing on this and everything else. And it's like... Uh, people do it all the time. There's people that are in prison and have been put to death for murders yeah, you, that they were proven you, to not have ever done. Like, have you hell, watched even for police a lesser interrogations? Extent, yeah. yeah, for a lesser extent. Think about like just someone who gets picked up and they say, "Oh, we found weed on you." Yeah, there are there are plenty of people who will plea out just not to deal with the fucking system. Yeah, and it's like, and your lawyer typically will sit there and tell you. You don't want this to go to trial because trial can go whatever way where this is a guaranteed outcome. I know because I've been through a bunch of lawsuits and settlements and stuff like that. And most lawyers, guess what? They don't want to go to fucking trial over that stuff because there's a high, higher likelihood that they won't get paid either. And you know, what? here's yeah. the funny thing is like it, like given how Jake described the situation and his reasoning for why his brother-in-law isn't a pedophile it's really ridiculous but then you'd have to factor in like okay so there was a woman a sister of jake's who was willing to marry this guy who's on the sex offender registry yeah have kids with this guy when he's on the sex offender registry like yeah i mean that adds to like the the plausibility that maybe he isn't a pedophile and he was falsely accused but at the same time he was also a kid when this stuff happened too and i'm not gonna like let that just slide like he was a dumb yeah. teenager. I, I now yeah, it's, but it's like, bad enough that like, as I pointed out to you guys, I think there's enough to it that it's kind of crazy that five years later they charged mm-hmm. him. So that sticks yeah. out to me as a, as a strike against Jake, the Vikings, brother-in-law, Delaware, whatever the fuck you want to call him. But like, I don't know. And he but was still again, charged it, it in the fourth just, degree. Like it, it wasn't just like, you know, uh delaware it was like a group of people that this one person accused of doing it yeah and who's to know if like any of them were flipped and well, like willing to what... testify like so that's a fucking was... damning i mean thing this right is there. We're, we're going all of this off of jake's word like we don't have any case documents any notes or anything that could corroborate what he's saying you could look I mean, it he up literally if... buried his brother-in-law to a certain extent you could look some of it up, but I don't know how much you're going to find because it's a matter of did they try him as an adult or a kid? Because if it's yeah, a juvenile I mean, court, he, like you can be tried in juvenile court as an adult. I don't think they states. would try him as a juvenile when he's an adult. The crime com- was committed as a juvenile. You can be an adult and they will put you through juvenile court. Guys, I had to look that up. So I was like, I don't know if they would do that or not. And yeah, some, some states they will. If you committed the act as a juvenile, they will try you through the juvenile courts, even if you're an adult, when you're put through. You will serve whatever sentence in, like, an adult jail and all that. You won't get the privilege of going to, like, a juvenile jail, but you will be sentenced according to juvenile law. Yeah, and for all we know, it could have been one of those, like, they they were like, look, we know you were there. You know, we know you all did it. Yeah. If you testify for us, you have to register on an offender, but you can avoid jail time. Yeah. Yeah. You because, know, you can... I mean, just think about it. Like, the DNA evidence is out of the fucking question. Statute oh, God, of limitations yeah. were, like, constant because you looked it up, Jim, that there is no statute for these kinds of crimes in yeah. Delaware. So, quite literally, they'd have to have, like, other, I don't want to say circumstantial, but, like, key pieces of evidence that would put holes into any of their alibis for it to look like you know we got it we got at least a strong case but it's not as strong as we like therefore we need people to flip like that's when the plea deals would come in well and the other thing that speaks to that too is the degree that he was charged with because like as we know even looking at the ricada stuff as the degree goes up so you get like from third to fourth to fifth the higher uh the consequences of the crime go down and as the degree goes down the consequences get worse 
That's why, like, he was charged with, what was it, the fourth degree fucking possession yeah, initially? Yeah. And now he's at second degree, and he's gone from looking at, like, five years probation to fucking five years in prison with, like, ten years probation. And, like, the fines jumped and everything else substantially. So it's just a matter of, I, I, that speaks, uh, I think, a little bit to what you're saying, too. Yeah, and, like, he was charged with um fourth degree... Because I, because you know, I looked it up. It, it was fourth degree um, rape of a uh, person from ages one to eleven. Yeah. So I, you could have easily been like, look, we got evidence. You know, we have stuff like that. We could either go for like first degree, or we can knock it down to four if you flip, and you can avoid jail time, and you just have to register for ten, twenty years on the registry. Yeah. We'll, yeah, I, well, I mean, sentencing we'll guidelines would have laid out, and then, you know, eventually you can petition to have it removed, and that's it. Yeah, because, like, look, we get that you're a minor. Because who knows, it, it, he was 16, but maybe it was, like, a party, and there were people, adults, and maybe they were more concerned with getting the adults. Yeah, you're garbling slowly, year old. by the way. Oh, uh, my mic has been doing that all night. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I you're don't... fine. You're better now. But, like, yeah, like, I can see them, like, maybe cutting a deal and be like, look, you're 16, you, this is going to already hit you hard. But if you just work with us, it won't destroy your life forever. Yeah. But help us put the bad guys away. You can make it right. And I can see him as a 16-year-old be like, well, yeah, I kind of, they well, no. kind of pressured me. I wanted to be cool like them. Maybe I did that. So, yeah, no, um, I'll, I'll flip. And that's... And I mean, he came in, he was charged at 21 and everything else. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah. fuck, he could have no loyalty at all to these people anymore. And that could be it. Yeah. And he could have willingly walked in and said, yeah, no, uh, that shit happened. This shit was bad. Um, that could have been what drove them apart. Fuck yeah. Who knows? I mean, there's like, so much that could I mean, happen in five years. When I look at this, like, given the limited information, I have to only speculate, given what Jake has said, it, it sounds like either one, his his 16-year-old brother-in-law at the time, you know, 16-year-old, was part of a rape gang, which is kind of, like, fucking absurd. Yeah. But if it's an 11-year-old, 1 to 11, like, max 11, accusing him when he's 16, like... The only other person he could have flipped on would have to be an adult, which paints like an even darker picture. Yeah. Which could have been like, you know, the father or the uncle was molesting the daughter and he was there either as a witness or like he was trying or the father coerced him into doing it. That's okay. why he got like the sweetheart plea deal. I was thinking of something else. Over. Especially with like um, it being like multiple people, right? Mm -hmm. I can imagine a high school party because there are high schoolers that are 18. That's your limitations is 18 in well, Delaware. They'd have to be 16, which I mean. Well, I mean, I, I, I know 16 year olds that were friends with 18 year olds that were. Yeah, but if it's at a high school party, it'd have to be at someone's house. And I don't think saying. that would go unnoticed. Like, you know. Well, I mean, parents go out of town. But they, like, the leave the 11-year-old at the home with, like, well, I mean, whatever older sibling. The 11-year-old could have snuck into the party. It could have been anything, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean if you have an 18-year-old, if your son's 18 and he's a high schooler and graduating that year, why wouldn't you think that your 18-year-old son could take care of his sister for a weekend? Well, I mean, that's the thing. You would think that would be an explosive enough story. We'd be able to find something linking to it. I'm just thinking, like, it has to be, like, either... Because, I mean, the high school party, I get what you're going at with, but it just seems like it's too loose, and you would be accusing a lot of people, and I doubt, like, they would be able to verify who was all at the party. So it had to be something concise enough that they would be willing to bring a plea deal and take it to court against someone else. So I'm thinking it has to be close-knit, and it has to be, like, either a gang that had a reputation of doing it or it was in the family. I don't know. There's so many scenarios that I could think of. Like the 11 year old could have lied about their age and they've been friends forever and hanging out and did all this stuff together consensually. And then 
turns around and the parents find out about it and they're like, no, that's rape. And now they're making the kid go talk about it to the police five years later. Uh, like, yeah, I mean, there, there's that's a another lot one, of but different... that's, that, that kind of like, I don't want to say like, um, it gives like the brother-in-law an out as far as like a sympathy, like, Oh, the parents turned her against me. We were just young and in love and shit like that. I mean, it's still fucking wrong. Oh yeah. But, yeah, there are going to be sympath- sympathetic jackasses like Dax and Vito who will hang on that as if it was like, you know, the last straw to grasp at. Yeah. Well, how old was this? Because he's it what? Happened... 2010. It happened when he was 16. So, yeah, 2010. The event happened in 2010. Uh, she was 11, he was 16, but then wasn't reported until like 2014, 2015. Yeah, when he was 21. Yeah. And then after that, in 2018 or 2019, is when he started working with Mr. Beast. Mm -hmm. So irregardless, like, the thing to not detract away from all this, like, you can have your speculations and think all this stuff is bad and think whatever you want about this situation. All of this shit happened before Mr. Beast hired him. He would have been on the fucking... Uh, sexual offender registry for like five years at that point, four years. Yeah, and it kind of rules out like Jake being the guy to make introdu- introductions because Jake only appeared after the brother-in-law was hired. Right. So fucking yeah, uh, Mr. Beast had to have found him through another contact. Yeah, another point of contact, which raises more problems. Like who else in the Mr. Beast crew knew about this guy and hired him, or right. was he just like a a walk-on applicant. I mean, it could be, it, but there's also the fact that, like, reverting back to the beginning of this video, there's another pedophile we're going to find out about. Mm-hmm. This one may not have been registered, but it's not going to be that big of a stretch of the imagination in my head for them to maybe know each other. I mean, it could be, too, but, like, it's just, it's not it's not unearthly, in my my opinion. I mean, it could be a matter of, like, fuck, uh, the brother-in-law could have just been friends with somebody and got it in that way. Like, because we've seen that happen time and time again. Yeah, and the f- the thing is, is, like, I could see them, like, I could see it more easily that they would, and to bring it back to the brother-in-law, I could see it more easily happening, happening uh, if it was, like, the in-the-family situation. Because they would be able to reason to try him not just as a minor, but to give him a plea deal with the fourth degree. Yeah, but at the same time, you could sit there and say that it's not their decision to have it be up to the district attorney, and the district attorney is going to look at it and see what's tribal and what's put what they're able to put forward as a plea deal. They're really the ones that are going to dictate all that. So, like the cops can't promise anything like that breaks like um, laws with Miranda and all that stuff and interrogation True, but, I mean, like so like we we have this dude's information if anyone wanted to look into the father like that would either like confirm yeah. or like blow apart my theory yeah i would just start taking his name and searching around the internet start seeing what you come up with let's see like uh, that's... you want it jim <laughs> i yeah i'm looking at stuff all right oh i'm seeing if i can't oh, find good. anything 24 hours breaking the Geneva Convention, I guess, is what we're doing. Um, so, you know, they, they're, they're giving me, you know, melatonin, you know, it's not helping, you know. And then, and then Jimmy would come in, like, every other day for, like, an hour, you know, to check in on me because he's doing other stuff. You know, I'm just the, the guy in the cage over here. He'll come back to me in a minute. Uh, and so he'd come by, he'd get the shots, he'd leave. Uh, sometimes he'd have a note for the director over the phone that would really piss me off. This is the note I got from the director, from Jimmy, uh, when I'm receiving some cash. Uh, he said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans? You know how hard it was to do a take of that? To pretend to make it genuine? I don't want to have student loans. I don't want to be in a cage. But Jimmy's the guy with the money, and if you, if you do what he says, he'll do what you want. You know, you'll and see, like, this is, this I think is such fucking bullshit because, like, he starts off with the, yeah, I'll be the monkey and dance for you. But then this was a step too far. It's just kind of, like, weird to me with him. Oh, you want your student loans paid off? You'd be in this cage. And you have, you have power over people. When one person doesn't have 
resources and the other one does and they, they hold it over your head and you go, of course, of course, yeah, I agreed to it. I needed it, of course. And just something about like having the cameras on me all the time. Like I was, I was, I was not having a good time, but we were filming a video. So I was trying my best to be funny, you know? I'm, I got, I'm a dark comic, you know? I got, I got bits about, I had a very traumatic life. Uh, uh, I have, my, 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 my dad is in jail for sexual assault of a minor, you know? So this kind of stuff is very near and dear to my heart. You know, I don't fuck around with this shit. Yeah, you know, I, I have jokes about that in my act. You know, I, I joke about it because, you know, that's what you do in a traumatic experience. You know, I, I have abusive relationships. I get out of it, the first thing I do is I, I do a type I'm about it. You know, so I'm in this situation where I, my, my mental health is not good. My physical health is getting worse, but we're filming. So I'm doing bits. <laughs> I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> and I'm being, you know, like, hey, it's been a couple days. I'm not doing so hot, you know, which if I'm filming a video, that's what I should be doing for the camera. But it, it, was, it was too real. <laughs> if they're faking videos, why couldn't we fake this one? You know, if, if, if we're allowed to let these cast members have some time off, of, of, of this difficult challenge, how come we couldn't turn the lights off? How come we couldn't maybe not have some time lapse footage for 10 seconds? Did you uh, try to get out? Yes. I was starting to calculate, um, oh, I don't know if I could do 30. Uh, uh, how much uh, can I, well, how, how can I manage to get out of here sooner uh, and still have a video and still uh, have some cash and um, get the plug, man. I, I just, I just, I did. Since we were doing time lapse shots and since they insisted on time lapse shots, I said, all right, we'll give you the time-lapse shots bet. I put my, I put my YouTube on, on with the whiteboard they gave me. And I was like, all right, yeah, scrub, go ahead and scrub that footage. You know, you got that whiteboard. Oh, oh, no, either that goes in or this footage is unusable. And then, you know, James Warren came in and erased it. You know, like, you know don't, don't put that, don't, don't, hey, we can torture him. Don't you dare let him get a plug in there, you know? Uh, so, uh, it, like, we were playing up the joke. You know, it's like, oh, I'm the boy in the cage, you know, whatever. Like, I'll play into a joke, whatever, it's fine. It's just something weird about when Jimmy jokes. I have jokes about my dad because I love jokes from my dad. I'll joke about my dad all the time. I guess piece of shit. Hey, my dad. Uh, I have friends that make fun of my dad. That's fine because I know their intent. I know where they're coming from. When Jimmy jokes with my dad, and I said that to seem weird. I don't like it. <laughs> we were doing that one of those hide and seek videos. Again, you know, at the time, they were a lot realer. Uh, so I got caught. And when you get caught, you know, you go to the, you go to, you go to the place where you get caught. And uh, I, I don't know if there's footage of this, I don't know if, you know, I, I definitely didn't make the final cut. Uh, but he, he says to me, uh, all right, you're going to jail, you know, like your dad. And like, it's a joke. But when my, my friends do it, it's fine. And, and Jimmy just wasn't my friend. He was my boss. And that wasn't cool. And so now, I'm locked in a cage at his whim. And I have to do things to get the cash I need to live. I mean... <sighs> And I got these cameras. I know what you're trying to say here, Pat, but again, like the separation of like his friends can joke with him, but not, you know, Jimmy, I could see like him looking at it as a hypocrisy standpoint, given what he knows, even at that time, because that would have been around the time when Delaware was around. He could have like interpreted that or at the very least internalized it as like Jimmy calling him a pedophile when he's like hired one I mean, he could have but like i just think he's playing this up honestly like yeah, he's hamming I, I, I the know, shit but, out of this yeah i know when he's retelling but if that is like an actual thing like without all the hamming up i suspect that's why but like i feel like this would hit just the same it would be like you know he sat there and he said this and he, like you're gonna go to jail like your dad and be like you motherfucker like you have the balls pedophiles. to say this stuff and while you're hiring pedophiles? Like, yeah. I, I feel like that hits stronger than woe is me, Jimmy wasn't my yeah. friend. You know what I mean? Like, that's where I feel like the snake oily a salesman here and like he's trying to fluff this up to like rack up as many tally marks against against Jimmy as he can because like the more he can rack up, the more he can point to and say, well, Jimmy didn't answer for this. He didn't answer for this. He didn't answer for this, you know, at the end of it. Which, what Jimmy but did was speaks bad more enough. to his like, ego. You don't need to fluff it up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, this speaks more to his ego than it does, like, to the truth of the situation. Yeah. If he was actually, like, a more tactical <laughs> egotist, he would have played it up like how you just pointed it out. Yeah. Or, like, what I theorize as well. Yeah. I mean, 
either of those two would have worked. Because that's like a natural reaction. Like, the, you're naturally, like, if you know about this stuff, you're going to be like, you motherfucker, you got the balls to sit there and say this shit while you're fucking hosting a goddamn pedo party at mom's place? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, like here's the thing. That was, that was like, in a video. So it's kind of like, you know, like, if anyone knew his name, they'd probably see it. Like, if he didn't, like, come out with it. Yeah. So it could also be have that, like, uh, effect to it where it's like, Oh, I'm outing a dark secret. Ha 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 ha. You know, in yeah. your face. Yeah, true. Well, I got I mean, bad I could see that. What? The Delaware court system is utterly retarded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one isn't? Well, okay, so the way Delaware works is apparently, like, you have to go to the courthouse where, the, where it was tried. Mm-hmm. Or you can email the court clerk with a reason... And I can't, I don't know how to word, hi, I'm an internet man. <laughs> you, tried a, you tried a pedophile about 14 years ago. Can you please give me access to that? Because I, I mean, really want to know how bad the pedophile was. I mean, like, you can pull a slug and just say, hello, my name is Jim. I am an internet journalist. <laughs> you don't even have to do that. Just be like, hey, uh, my name is Jim. I'm researching uh, publicly accessible information on this person um i understand that they had a case tried in your court and i was just seeing you know again what was publicly available what you're able to supply me thanks bye yeah but i i, I don't have that i would literally <laughs> just be like look, you, look you, you tried a pedophile about 14 years ago i need to know if pedophiles i need to know if pedophiles still pedoing you, so like you should have you just that hook me up you Can you sh- just hook me up, please? Like, thanks. You should have the like, information. We, I, I thought I sent that to you. In well, a strictly I, I think he's thing. talking about, like, the court case specifically. Yeah, yeah like, I think that's know, on there. Who are the other defendants? I think that's on there, is what I'm saying. The, the case, other defendants and their names? Not the other defendants and their names, but the court case will be. Yeah, no, no, there's no lookup. Like, you have to... Yeah, but I, what like, I'm no, saying well, is, is that we sent you the image from the registry. That should have the court case on it, you could refer to. Hmm. Yeah, but I still have to still have to ask them for the to email me a PDF of it. Ironically, <laughs> a, PDF. a PDF on a PDF. <laughs> yeah, because like they don't actually have like an online database that they yeah. that's connected to the internet. Like, I didn't realize Delaware was so backwards, and then I realized that like it really it's is. It's almost like Minnesota. Yeah, every fucking state's fucked up one way or another legally. Especially when you get into like original thirteen our shit counties, up. like you can look our shit up, like just you know. Yeah, but you had Franklin and stuff, so like you had someone with brains at one point. Yeah, well, that was so long ago. Like, Ironically, also a pedophile, technically. <laughs> God, there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, there really is. Like, when you look at it, like, it's like when, I, when I say I need to know a pedophile, I'm still pedoing, like. yeah i know there's public concern all around throughout time yep and i was unwell i had editors coming up to me saying you good bud and i was like yeah why you're clearly unwell uh and he goes uh well because the footage you're sending in is haunting (laughs) because i'm trying to be funny but i am mentally decaying so i'm doing bits Someone said there is a horror cut uh, of a video in this. He was the person who says that because he is the person who says that later on. He is the only person that uses those words. And I'm saying, like, who's... That's something else I picked up on the Watching this. Like, who, who wants to see this? What is fun about this, the video? And so I, the thing that made me want to, I got to get out. I can't do another day in a year. Um, Jimmy comes in and, uh, I'm asleep. I don't know what time it is. I was like two or three or whatever. He's like, why is he sleeping? I don't know, because I can't sleep. And he comes in and he wakes me up. Uh, and he goes, ask me why I have two. And it's like the little details that you pick apart here. Why is he sleeping? I don't know, because he can't sleep. So why are you sleeping? Like, I could be a meticulous asshole picking apart details right here. So you were asleep from lack of sleep would be the better way to say it. And you're just sitting there, no, I was sleeping because I couldn't sleep. Makes no fucking sense because you're trying to put too much fucking detail into this. Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, 
I mean, the most detailed lies, the easiest to pick apart. I mean, yeah. again, the way how he's making out Mr. Beast and the Mr. Beast crew is that they're the most meticulous, retarded, fucking evil people imaginable. Yeah, like, and this is realistically, look, I hadn't slept well in two days. I finally was able to crash, and then Mr. Beast came in and, like, wakes me up. I, I don't know how long I had been asleep because, again didn't have any clocks or anything like that sounds so much more convincing than the shit that he just had fucking fall out of his fucking lip holes yeah i mean hell the way hell he's talking about it it sounds like he's sleep deprived right now he's manic as a motherfucker in this whole interview which he's quote unquote so exhausted and then he ended up falling asleep it's amazing for someone who's so exhausted he can remember all these details too damn it that damn it (laughs) <laughs> well he probably watched the replay and just remembers the replay please tell me you at least got my little referential bit there <laughs> yes. i mean there are easily explainable ways like for why he's saying what he is he probably watched the replay yeah but like because i mean if he's going to if he's going to say someone said it was a horror cut and he says oh i said it you know yeah <laughs> Yeah, he's like he's just conflating things just left and right though. It's just amazing. Like he's built a pre-established narrative in his own mind for this story. Now like you're naturally going to build a narrative, but like his is so like overt. It's like insane in my mind. Like cuz nobody thinks of it tell a story this way. Like I would have probably minimal details if I'm trying to recount something from like like, I'm even trying to think. An impactful event from 2021 would have been relatively boring, but about the only impactful fucking thing I can think of is I watched the Marvel movie universe in sequential order. Couldn't even tell you what I thought of the movies at the time. I think I thought that um, Civil War was better than I thought it was going to be. The airport scene probably looked... St- I-, I can't even tell you decisively how I would have felt. And this guy's acting like he can remember intimate details. I don't know. I think... <laughs> So the weirdest thing is like I don't know. Um like when I've had traumatic things happen to me, like I remember the day my grandmother died, right? I remember yeah. the look yeah. on her face. I remember the the hospital and being pulled into the room and I can even I can see it right now, right? Yeah. We stood against the wall and to the left was like a fern and to the right was like this little th- it, it's not a banana tree, but it kind of looked like a banana tree. Yeah. And I remember how clean it smelled. Yeah. You know, like it was just so clean. Yeah. And that's, and then I remember when I, they said that she was gone. I remember the cold sting of the tile on my hands. Cause I had fallen to my knees and I just, I wept, you know, I yeah. was on my hands and knees crying. Right. Yeah. That was it. I don't, not intimate like, details like this. Like, yeah, I, I could probably tell you vaguely accurate details like that, but it's just like with him, there's just something's conflated. Yeah. With everything he's like, doing. Like it's performative. Like I can yeah. tell he has stage training, right? Because like I could sit here and like, you know, putting aside my bit that I normally do for a second, like I can, you know, say how the like it stung my hands like the coldness and how it felt so cold on the floor yet it was so clean but i felt so i guess dirty hearing about my yeah loved one dying and feeling like that weird sort of paradoxical like yeah something doesn't it's not right no it's not true like i just saw her i saw her body and it's not right like that sort of shock and he's just sort of like jovial like ha 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 like even like putting boy was i fucked up (laughs) yeah like like even with my jovial offensive humor bit character i play here on stream like you wouldn't even think to go to that extent i can't do that when i'm thinking about my grandmother yeah. like if this is something that's so traumatic yeah i could see him making a couple jokes but this is more than that yeah this is like it was bad but i need to make it i need to be the star of it you know i need to take the center stage like i need to amplify it you know yeah it's just i don't know it's your brief case and he goes, oh, because this, this one's for today. Yep. And this one's for the challenge. And I go, what's the challenge today? 
He goes, you're gonna, you're gonna run a marathon. You're gonna do the two, 22.6K, whatever it is, and you're gonna do it on that treadmill over there. The first challenge I did was a Rubik's Cube, and I'm, I'm, I'm dyslexic, I'm dumb, I don't, I don't know how to do a Rubik's Cube. Uh, so your first challenge was Rubik's Cube. I was like, oh, I don't wanna do it. I was like, oh, camera, I don't, I don't wanna do it. He goes, just do it for the thing, like kid, you know? Like, the, the, there was an element of, oh, Jake will do what we want because he's in-house. You know, that, that's one of the reasons why they got me. Uh, Jake's, uh, uh, he's, he's an inside guy, so he'll, he'll do whatever. Uh, I'm gonna step away for a second. Uh, we, we, we can push him a little extra hard because we know he's good. We know he's I couldn't say no to the, the treadmill thing. Yeah. So I, I, I... People who run marathons train forever and it's still hard. Again, writer. Do I look like I run? I don't run, you know? Let alone a marathon. Let alone net training for it. So I was in a sunlightless, you know... Did you try to say no? Like, did you have a choice or...? Based on the Rubik's Cube thing and based on all the other stuff, like they gotta, there was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know? You, you know? And I, if, if I refuse, it's just, oh, that's the whole video. I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. And so I wanted to be a good sport and I wanted to get the boost and I wanted the cash. And so I started running at 12. Um, I, yeah, I was able to take some breaks and I, I, I asked him, how long do I have? He goes, until I get back. <laughs> and I'm, I'm running until 3 a.m. When I got off the treadmill, oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe. It's all over, just these big red. I couldn't, I couldn't walk. My, my, my muscles were like, just the, the lactic acid. I, I, I got off the treadmill and then the people that came in to like ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good. Then that's when I was like, I'm done. I can't, I'm done. I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. See, now that part sounds <laughs> believable to me. Yeah. Yeah, because like, more, like so. he's saying like how I felt like, you know, those little details like the blisters and stuff like that. Like that's what you remember, like memorize as like a traumatic memory. And like you see him like put away the bit for a second. Yeah. And sort of like be honest. Like that's that's where I think he's being real. But I, it, it's so hard, though, everything leading up to it. Oh, man. Yeah, it's it's I think there's sprinklings of truth in this and like every good lie has some truth to it like if you want to make a convincing lie anyway and like i i think that's i'm not saying that he's a liar i think he's just he's being overt about it like he's putting in so much insane detail that like it's just it, it takes away from the story at the end of it well i think he's doing the typical youtuber thing here right like yeah yeah you like you know like oh yeah like he like the katie bugs thing right like how like at first it started off as like oh well he was cuddling me oh well no then he groped me you know what i mean like it's like this like escalation right like the truth isn't enough the truth isn't damning enough we yeah. need to kick it up we need to kick it up like no what what that story alone right there is enough yeah you don't need more than that. I promise you, you don't. Like, I just, I don't know. There's parts of this that also just ring equally as, like, fake and fantastical. Like, you're remembering all this stuff, like, oh, Jimmy just said, hey, just do the bit. Like, he broke character for that moment. Now, that's something that probably wouldn't have made it into any edited cut that he would have seen. So, can I trust that he's saying that, or is he making this up? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. was it Jimmy that actually said that, or was it one of the produ- producers or director or something like that? Like, and he's attributing it to Jimmy's orders, so it's, yeah, it's Jimmy by proxy. Yeah, like it's just a matter of God. I'm yawning. I'm fucking tired. It's five a.m. <sighs> yeah, it's just he's making it more and more and more fantastical. I'm going to try and speed this up because I don't know how much longer I can last. <sighs> I mean, that's what I'm. Yeah, it's like in. And I'm fucking psyched about how I'm uh, not well. And uh, like I said, there was a lot of good people over there that were saying, you gotta pull him out. Yeah, I had friends uh, that did some freelance work. And uh, they, they would tell me, they'd be like, yeah, everyone knows you over there. Everybody loves you. They go, uh, oh, Jake, well, I love that guy. Shame what happened to him. <laughs> like I'm a ghost. And I asked him, I said, I said, how much longer are you guys gonna keep me in here? And the guy goes, realistically, like at least seven more days? I, no, no. And they didn't let me leave right away either. They wanted to make sure, you know, everything was fine. So I just you know, slept for a while. They turned the lights off. <laughs> and uh, they, they brought, it's like they brought in all my friends, you know, to make it a little. 
been right around people I liked, and Jimmy. <laughs> then everybody was around me making sure I was good, making sure I was okay. Yeah. But Jimmy had his like, he was sitting in the chair turned around like an evil villain. Swear to God, everyone was looking at me and he was like Lex Luthor over there. All of this plays uh, into what I was talking about where like he's just, he's got to like one up that thing. Like just take into account how many times he one ups stuff. It's like he brought in all my friends, but then he had to be there. And then he's sitting in the chair like an evil fucking villain. And then he says this. And then he does this. Yeah. And right he's like right before that where he's cracking jokes, like I can believe that that's like sort of some obfuscation as like using humor to sort of be able to like Yeah, I like guess, the, well they finally turn the lights it. off. You know, like that that sounds truthful. Yeah, but, and, like, but then he goes just, right into those extraneous details of like him being the Lex Luthor. Yeah, like, like, it, like this is this is the snake oil salesman right here. Like he's come right back. He stands up. He did the, he does the exact same thing when he's pretending to have a human connection. You know when you're watching a video and he's um, he's like, oh stop, you're gonna make me cry, and he like touches his eye or whatever as if he's crying. He's, not, he's just like you've done how many countless fucking times in this whole fucking video? I didn't have to pretend to do that shit. She says uh, you know, as as if rehearsed by his lawyers. Uh, yeah, you know, your mental health is most important thing. You know, just want to make sure you're okay. And the last thing we want you to do is, I can almost hear the word Sue come out of his mouth. Yes, he just he just stop it before I got out. I, I did not get the 300k, but I got. He goes, think of it this way. At least you get to keep what you earned. Miss shit, like, I, I'm going to skip forward a bit here because there is something that's kind of funny in all of this. I just want to point out because now we go on and on and circle around in the story. Um, there's something on the screen here that I want you guys, I'm going to read it out, but let me know if it, it sticks out to you like it did to me. How you feeling after a few days? Better. I couldn't sleep. Uh, I still couldn't sleep even a few days out, but I almost have my sleep cycle back on track. My legs and joints are good, uh, but the blisters on my feet still hurt to walk on. Medical advice I got was to not lance them and just let them go away with time. I'm mentally still in an uneasy place, but I've gotten back on better help. My therapist is a little concerned, but uh, we are working on things. And this is 2021. That fucking better help stuck out to me. Because if this was paid for by fucking Jimmy and he sent him to BetterHelp after it was known BetterHelp was a fucking scam. Oh my God. <laughs> Can you imagine though that because it's Jimmy, they probably cut him a good deal. Yeah. So that was like their company yeah. therapist or whatever. Like That's exactly what I'm thinking. Like it's not that fucking far out there. No. Philip DeFranco and all them that like fucking worked Actually, with it. Best question. Yeah. Did Mr. Beast ever do a better help promotion? I'm kind of curious. I've never looked through to find I think out. He did. But if I remember correctly, when the better help scam was going on, that would have been before he blew up and became like YouTube's golden child. It would have been as he was actively blowing up. Because mm -hmm. when I looked up the boogie video, the kill street, and that was 2019. Mm -hmm. So it was just before COVID and everything. Yep. Mr. Boogie's 2988. Two Yep, that's Boogie, Furry Boogie 1488. That's where it was. Yeah, the better help thing on the kill stream. No, I said Mr. Boogieist. <laughs> Boogieist. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta look this up now. I can't, I might not be able to uh, get the court record, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I just, I, I, that stuck out to me. And the reason why it stuck out to me is better help is fairly expensive. Like, that was part of their big hustle, is their expense. Like, they're an expensive service. And the way they charge you and everything else. And so, I almost want to say that it, it's more likely that he would have provided this. Especially seeing the mental anguish was caused by the video. And it would have been to his, uh, his benefit to provide this for the guy that he just put through all this psychological torture, you know. But I just thought it would be really fucking funny if it wasn't, if Jimmy didn't fucking pay for this stuff and use better help after knowing it was a scam. And nobody caught that. While you're looking for that, Jim, I'm just going to fast forward. That was the one thing I wanted to point out here. Oh, yeah. I just thought of a better name for it. What? Instead of better help, it's, it, instead of better help, it's a booger help. <laughs> <laughs> it kills boogie. <laughs> what was this? Um, I don't think we need to worry about any of this. Oh, there was a tie-in here that I had with this. 
and it tied into what he says in the video about the police working with him and why I think like you could possibly sit there and say that there's a lot of uh company clout when it comes to Jimmy and so he's got the private investigators and everything else well this talks about a another uh business in the area that was the camp that they supposedly trashed when they had the fucking boat out on the lake well he said that you know it wasn't ideal but i was graced with a lot of benefit and so i didn't say anything bad about uh jimmy's uh not taking care of the obligations that he stated so it's kind of like one of those things i wonder if it's not a known fact that like uh people excuse jimmy's ignorance and assholishness and all that um just because of his wealth and his ability to use money to fix problems uh, i mean that would add to why he would hire local pd yeah. detectives i mean given that it is a business that he's running out of north carolina he probably benefits at least a tri-county area yeah so he'd have at least uh, i want to say about maybe seven municipalities he could turn to for an investigative squad oh yeah yeah josh there's uh better helps kind of making resurgence right now too which is the thing that's kind of funny yeah, um, i saw a commercial on tv for it yeah yeah the, they've gone through like a whole iteration where basically there was the scam they then bought a company that it's kind of interesting basically they bought a company that was kind of like a uh a phone book for finding doctors and so what would happen is you would go on there you would try and find a, a doctor right and they would say okay this is what they specialize in and everything else and they would have a, a button for book now and when you would click on that it'd be like sorry they're not accepting patients right now but with better help you can get a therapist right now and they were hooking people through that way and then all of a sudden that got called out as being a scam so now they've come back to youtube <laughs> yeah because i'm pretty sure that phone book came from a data broker of some sort it was an independent app that they bought um but operated it still under the independent name away from uh better help so yeah it who maybe yeah had a little rough growing up i can't speak on that but i didn't have empathy for it uh because i you know, had a rough growing up and i think when you're hyper fixated on something like i love stand up you love youtube everyone you'll fixate on a thing you know, I think he just wanted to be the best YouTuber so bad. And because the industry's metrics, you know, rewarded some not great behavior. If you're just going on autopilot based on what the numbers say, you know, you, you can do some things that maybe aren't good. But we well, I mean, and here's I, the thing. He may have succeeded in being the best YouTuber ever, but he also succeeded in being the best employer for pedophiles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, God. he pretty much, like, outshined Jeffrey Epstein here. <laughs> I, I'm skimming through fucking Mr. Beast videos to try to find better help, and I feel myself slowly dying inside. <laughs> like, I just, I just hate this smarmy bastard more and more. The more, the, the more research I do to try to hate him, the more I actually hate him for completely unrelated <laughs> reasons, but just as strongly. Oh, man. I'm going to cover... You know what's really fucking crazy? Uh, this is just an aside, but you, you know the reason why you're dying slowly inside? The diabetes from the beast bar? I don't know. Well, maybe not that, but... <laughs> I was going to say, it's because you, you know that, like, the real reason why he was doing philanthropy. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, everyone else was, like, thinking, oh, he's doing it so he doesn't have to, like, you know, pay taxes. Yeah. Like yeah, that was the original claim. Is like now we know it's like pedophile here, pedophile there. Oh, look under that rock, pedophile. He was, you know. <laughs> well, it was one of those things that like he was getting a tax write off, and he, his employees were window shopping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh god, I'm gonna watch the Delaware portion of this, and then I'm calling it good because I'm fucking exhausted. And my head is fucking killing me. I just say stuff. So whatever happens happens at this point. Uh, outside of it, Chris Tyson, did you ever have any or share about sexual misconduct to the company? I've heard rumors. I can't confirm or deny anything. I don't have any tangible evidence, but I've heard stuff that I, I mean, if it could be investigated, that'd be great. It was like water cooler talk, but I've heard things. Yes, of course. I heard, you know, people have been let go for sexually assaulting some very young people. The idea that Jimmy didn't know or that Jimmy was 
covering stuff up. He didn't want stuff to come out. You know, he's very careful about his image. You have the tangible proof that he knew, but covered it up. How do you prove that, you know? Well, there was a known sex offender, registered sex offender, convicted sex offender on the registry and everything who worked there. And like, you can, you know, someone pees in public, you're on the registry, you know, you, you get it. You can still have a job after you're on the, that's not one, that's one thing. You know, you go to prison, you get rehabilitated, that's one thing. You know, like if you do your time, that's fine. I, I think we should be read the rehabilitation in this country. But that guy, from what I hear, like I can't confirm or deny, from what I hear, he's on the registry for doing some not great stuff to some underage people. And they knew that. He's working at a channel that has underage people on and around and is targeted to underage people. And they covered up the fact that not only did he work there, but he was like the manager when it all started. And you know that he knew, and because he'll be in videos, he'll be in thumbnails, he's, he'll be around. And whenever he, he, he is, he's wearing a mask. Why would you wear a mask? Why would you conceal your face? It's like, you, what, what are you concealing? That you were a registered sex offender? And that your face could be looked up on a thing? How much more can you literally cover up a sex offender with a physical mask? Like, do I have to, is, how, is it more on the nose? Or I, I don't know why they let him go because there's, there's rumors back and forth. You know, so I don't know why they let him go, but he didn't leave at one point. Even if that guy didn't do anything, they still knew about it and he was still around. And what if he's one of the Discord servers? What if he's not? I don't know. But when I was there, they called him Delaware. I said, why, why, why do you call him Delaware? I didn't, I didn't know. Apparently, they called him Delaware because he's not allowed to go back to Delaware. That's his nickname? Colloquially? Like, you know, it's Delaware. Don't ask him why. Yeah. The fuck? And Jimmy Nova, the, the likelihood that he didn't know is astronomically low. All right, so finally, I have a recorded phone conversation. The person on the other end of this line. I am skipping this phone call. <laughs> there is you know no way in hell you can have me sit through this fucking phone call. What bothers me is he. When he said, like, underage people. What? Like, yeah. plural. Yeah. And Delaware only has one conviction for one girl. Yeah. So that that boils the question of, like, is that Delaware that he's also referring to? Or is there other people? Oh, there's other people. Victims? Well, like, you know, like the like, paint, the paint huffer dude who was trying to like, you know, knock out the women in that 100 versus 100 challenge. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I think there's multiple, like, it, it's a meme right now with all the fucking uh, red dots for like the offender thing in the building. And that's Mr. Beast headquarters. But like, it's starting to not be a meme. It's, right, it's starting to be like. become reality. Yeah. Like... Like and it's it, it's it's getting too real. <laughs> I think Reed's taking uh, two W's this month. You know, uh, don't promote gambling to children and uh, don't have offenders on payroll. Also, yeah, just from where I'm sitting, it seems extremely unlikely that Jimmy wouldn't know. But you know, I know that that's I'm sure that's the defense he'll go with. So I'll just say preemptively, like you know, if somehow Jimmy didn't know about Delaware, I think it's still such an extreme level of negligence. Like, what you're not doing background checks. You're not everyone at your company knows, but somehow you don't know. Um, I, I think that needs more of an explanation than just saying. I didn't know. Well, how didn't you know? How, how did this person get into the company and, and you know, a company that makes content for children and, and is around children? So yeah, Jimmy, I think we need. I mean, seriously, you, you had him on fucking support. payroll. Yeah, like I, I, this is where I'm saying, like, in order for this to not come out and be awful for everybody, like he has to like get rid of anybody with a questionable background. Like, do background checks first of all, if you haven't done them. Get rid of anybody with a questionable background. Sorry, here's a severance check. I need to save my business and then literally like overhaul the whole fucking thing. Yeah. Cause like there, there is no acceptable reason why in fucking the 21st century, you're not fucking doing background checks. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I know we keep joking about like how he took, uh, had his mom like go to dinner with this pedophile before yeah. he interviewed him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I mean, is that actually something that happened? So Jacob, tell me about this uh this this court thing that I, Jimmy's been telling me about. <laughs> did, no, no, seriously, did that actually happen? Like did he have yeah. the pedophile over Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. they okay. no, um Jake admitted to Jimmy, it. Yeah. yeah, Jimmy and his mom had him over <laughs> to discuss his conviction. Oh I my swear God. to fucking God. Like here's here's the funny thing, like I mean, number one, why would you involve your own mother? I mean, I mean, she is an adult. She would know the difference. I mean, comparative by age, Jimmy's a lot younger than Delaware. Well, How? maybe I, I was floating the idea. Maybe she works for the company in like HR. Well, maybe. I think she could just be on the board of executives. 
Board of Executives, too. I mean, I was going to go with the angle, like, it, like maybe his mom is, like, a pedophile detector, but of, like, the Miss Cleo sort. <laughs> Call like, me now, Jimmy's mom. I will tell <laughs> you. <laughs> the spirits say you haven't touched the little girl since. <laughs> Look into the bones, and we see you are not. We're dead. gonna throw the chicken bones out now. Now, now, this looks like <laughs> you know what, Jika, your brother in law is, is good. <laughs> I just can't fucking keep it up. I'm sorry. The sad part is, like, that was such an offensive fucking display. <laughs> and in the 90s, we all fucking bought into it. Yeah, we all fucking. <laughs> I mean, it made it. its way into GTA Vice City. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean... The fact that I could do that, you I guys just... knew exactly who I was talking about, yeah. I mean, like, the funny thing is, like, I just can't see it. Like, even if she's on the board of executives, she has to have, like... Like, what kind of fucking sense do you have to even hire a pedophile in the first place? Like, yeah, I, I know there is, like, considerations. Breaker. Yeah, like, this guy should have been working at a fucking gas station. My if not, like, thought, in the back rooms of a greasy spoon. My thought on this is somebody that is close enough with Jimmy said, Hey, look, I have a friend who really needs a job. But there's this caveat. He's a registered sex offender. He's He's got a wife. He's got a kid. He really but needs to, make to provide. Him a manager. Well, he He's really a needs to provide. Defender. So if that didn't sell you already, <laughs> let me let me I, sell I, you. I'm being, Jimmy. I'm being a dead honest here, and I guarantee you, Jimmy, who is as successful as he is and as smart as he is as a businessman, he probably was like, I don't know what to do. I'm going to ask my mom to gauge the conversation here and talk with her and just like literally private decision. And, like, he trusts his mom probably more than most people at that business. It's not like he has a significant other, like a wife. And so I yeah. think that's, honestly, like, his deferred judgment will go to his significant other. It's going to be his mom in this case, his surrogates. But seriously, like, that's that's an even worse look for his mom because that just shows that she's a failure as a mother. Oh, Yeah. I'm not saying it's not a good look. <laughs> like, hold up. I'm not supporting this shit for a second here. Like, I'm just let's, giving let's roll this my, back. I'm giving my theory. I, I, I know, how but this the, like, seriously. <laughs> no, I'm just looking at it like, how bad is it for Jimmy? I was like, wait a minute. His mom had dinner with him. Like, why aren't people like pointing out your mom's a fucking failure? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Your mom's a failure. Yeah. You failed, sir. Good night. <laughs> like, seriously, the one person, like, you would suspect, like, out of any group in society that would try to keep pedophiles at bay would be the mother. Like, I mean, second best would be the father, but, you know, he'd have a 12 gauge to keep him away. And the only thing I can think of is that he, the fucking Delaware dude sold him on a convincing enough story of I was a kid, I've never done anything like this since, I've had to be on a registry because of the charges and all that. Like, I mm. literally have no proclivities for this. It's not... And that's like, another thing. It's like, I was a kid when it happened. Oh, you sweet child, you didn't know what you were doing. It's like, it's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't. I like remember when it. Jimmy was sixteen. He didn't fuck a child, but goddamn, <laughs> it's like his, oh, it was but he was charming friend, enough. He could have. It's like mother, please. <laughs> oh, but to God. make him a manager, like right off the fucking bat, are you kidding me? Like this, this woman, like holy shit! Not only did she give birth to like a scheming little jackass with a punchable <laughs> face, she greenlit the hiring of a pedophile. <laughs> Top tier mom. <laughs> S tier. Maybe for Max Carson. Uh, S tier. <laughs> Don't know like, if I killed the fly or not, but if anybody heard smacking, that was the death of a fly. We didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I wanted to hear him. I wanted to hear the smack as the life fled from his body. I kind of want to smack the mother now. Like, holy fuck. 
<laughs> well, I've got some rolled up paper if you can get her over here. And <laughs> just we'll tell her we got no, another I'm registered about, sex like, offender. Rings on... No, I'm like talking about putting rings on all of my fingers and go backhand. Oh, oh man! You just imagine it's like no, Mrs. Mrs. Beast. Mrs. Um, Beast. We... <laughs> Mrs. Beast. <laughs> we we have a pedophile that we would like to um fi- seek employment. Oh sure, oh sure. You you can play in the playground with the kids. Yes, yes. Thank you, Mister B, Mrs. Beast. Like I, like I said again, not not giving um justification for this, but like thinking through things. The only thing I can think of is that they're like, well, in a manager position, he's probably distanced enough from working with kids. But then, like, slowly becomes buddy buddy enough that then he becomes kind of a. We need someone to fill in in a pinch in a video, as long as there's no kids, and then it's that's how it goes, kind of thing. Like I yeah, think but, that's how it happened. I, I mean, don't I think it's excusable. Being like, yeah, he hasn't offended, and he made a mistake. Maybe we can give him a chance, and when he leaves, hey. I worked at this guy, nothing happened, you know, maybe he's yeah. like, I'll do some charity work <laughs> instead of giving money to to African children, you just hire a diddler. You know, uh, if that's the case, here. then, I mean, if that's the case, then Mr. Beast and his mother wouldn't have a problem of hiring Pie Man. Oh my god. It's, it's Pie Thing. Pie okay. Thing. How about just Pie Plate? <laughs> we have a bunch of deaf children. We're gonna leave you here with this kind man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 it's okay. They'll never hear you coming. You have blind kids too. Oh god! Yeah, so like, like they won't the be able children. to identify you. <laughs> yeah, they'll, 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 Oh my god, the deaf children thing. That would literally be the worst thing because they're thinking like, whenever he puts out his hands, he's trying to sign to him. <laughs> I don't know. This dude was turning butter the whole time. <laughs> like they were playing charades. It's like that didn't look like he was offering charades. Like, oh my god! What in the name of Satan? Like, oh god! Do deaf children scream? I don't know. We're about to find out. <laughs> I mean, they're not mute, so... Can, can you see them, like, signing aggressively for help? Like... <laughs> the only sign language he's, like, doing is just, like, put a circle in one hand and the finger's going through the hole. <laughs> There's a special place in hell for me. Oh, there's a special place in hell for all of us. (laughs) (laughs) There was another one he did where he was like making his cheek go in and out. (laughs) He brought out this lollipop. I don't know why. (laughs) And then he started pretending that he had maracas, but they were at his waistline. (laughs) For some reason, he just started gyrating aggressively at me. This kid comes back with an irrational fear of Batman. <laughs> you just see Elvis Presley and has a breakdown. Like, it's like, what's wrong? It's like, it reminds me of the Batman. <laughs> it's like, Elvis has been dead for years. The Batman hasn't been. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, I'm going to fucking end it there. Uh, I don't have anything for you guys more. Oh, wait. There's the poll. Uh, so. Which one of us is going to hell first? <laughs> 77% <laughs> of you think the sad comedian has ruined Dog Pact's uh, W over Mr. Beast. And there are 23% of you that hopefully have changed your mind by now. <laughs>